Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Hell, five regions right there. It's a fucking setup. Good. <clears throat> Or at least five regions to think it was a setup. Well, it was definitely something. There, there's there's more to it than 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 they're actually letting on. It just doesn't add up. There's too there's too many there's too just too many coincidences here. Sounds like it was baited. You know you know how they bait people, you know. They'll send, you know, hookers or, or, or cops pretending to be prostitutes and then boom, you pay the money, you're busted for prostitution or whatever. Okay. They do it all the time. I mean, come on, it's just it's 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 nothing new. <laughs> okay. You know. Hell, remember that time that I told you the case here in Dallas? It was a number of years ago now. But it was either the Dallas PD or one of them in there was crushing up fucking sheetrock and, and trying to sell it to dope dealers as, as coke, cocaine. They got busted on that. <laughs> so don't tell me it doesn't happen because it happened there in Dallas. Okay, and that's just not an isolated incident. Okay, I'm telling you, these people will set you up. Okay. Oh, here's the FBI, I think, was caught one time. Uh, I think it might have been here in Dallas, too. Another incident involving the FBI. We've got a big fucking green building downtown. I call it the Jolly Green Giant. It's a Bank of America. And I think they, they targeted somebody. I don't know who it was. You'd have to go look it up. But they gave them a, a detonator. They, you know, pretended like they were, hey, you know, here's a detonator. Uh, and even gave them the, the fake explosive or something, or they planted it or something. If you'll go over at a certain time and detonate, we'll blow that building up. They got busted on that one. So, I mean, the evidence is clear. Okay, that these people are not good. They are. They will set you up for a fall any way they can. Get the money. Get the 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 prosecution or the case one or whatever. Ron Rectrout talks about that all the time, don't he? Huh. <laughs> go ahead. Mm-hmm. That he did. That he did. But something, <clears throat> you know, and Billy kind of alluded to, you know, to the taser and everything. And even the animation somewhat made, you know, made, it, made his argument plausible. Well, actually made it more plausible than, than one wants to admit. But. They still shot at him. He was not, he did not, he, he kept saying, don't shoot, don't shoot, don't shoot. They did the, yeah, <coughs> instead they did the opposite. Yeah, but look at this. I mean, you, you, you were a military police officer, okay? I'm sure you carried a gun. All right. No, I didn't. Oh, you didn't? No kidding. No. I thought all military police carried a gun. Uh, New York State did not let us carry guns. No kidding. Wow. <laughs> I didn't know that. That's amazing. In but fact, if which, I was, which is kind of stupid, I thought. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of stupid. I mean, but anyway, anytime, even that would, that just happened what, last year or whatever. Okay. These people, anytime that they go up to a car or on a, on a traffic stop and they, and it comes back suspicious looking. Okay. Or even the characters that are driving could be suspicious looking. You'll either have one cop or you'll have two. You've seen them on, vi on, on YouTube videos where the cop's standing over on the sidewalk, you know, pointing his gun, okay, while the other cop walks up on the driver's side door, okay. What do you think that cop over there pulled his gun out for? Protect him, okay. So, you, you don't pull a taser out, <laughs> okay, unless you've, unless you've got the guy out and he starts fighting you. That's when you pull your taser out and shoot him with the taser. But they knew who they were. They supposedly they were terrorists. Remember, they were you know they just 
arm took over a, a, a place up there, whatever it was. Okay. So, and everybody else had their guns out. How come that cop that, uh, that was right there in front of him didn't have his gun out too? It doesn't make, see, there's another one. It sounded like it, we, he was a coy to get him out of the vehicle while that, or while another one shot him. I mean, do you see any difference? Why would you, a cop, a, a experienced state trooper, okay, this is obviously, obviously the guy was a state trooper, or is, or still is, or whatever, okay, you would approach a supposedly armed suspect, and you go pull your fucking taser out? Uh, if it was me, if, it's, if I didn't know anything about the circumstances, I'd pull my fucking gun out, okay? Wouldn't you? Yeah, Think but here, it, here's the thing. <clears throat> the, the the state trooper, which apparently was it was a state trooper. I stood, you know, I have to go with what was said here. <clears throat> he turns around. He had his gun in his hand. Put it back in the holster and took out the taser. See, that just don't make no sense. Knowing that the that the the, the suspect quote-unquote suspect, could be armed, you don't put your gun back in and take out the taser. You sit there and you give them orders or what, and if, well, I mean, Finnegan really shouldn't have went for his, for his jacket, okay? I'm afraid that's a mistake that he made. And that mistake could have got him shot, okay? Well, it did. They did shoot him, obviously. Okay, what would happen if he didn't? Would they still shot him? Okay. I said, more, more questions, you know, more questions. I mean, when you have these people <laughs> pointing guns at you, you don't go and start reaching in your pocket. And the guy knew guns. He knew he knew all that. He wasn't stupid. He was a fucking rancher, for God's sake. I mean, he's handled guns all, all of his life, okay? When you got guns pointed at you, you don't go and make and all of a sudden spook them. Because if you spook them, they're going to fucking kill you. Mm hmm what he did. So why did he do that? Of course, we may never know. I don't know. He ain't talking. <laughs> Finnicum, Finnicum, that that is. I mean, I, you know. No, but what happened uh, to Finnicum is what's ta is what's doing a lot of the talking. Yeah, that's what does. Yeah, that too. There's just, you know. Well, you know, I got arrested one time when we, when, I, when we first got here. Because I'm carrying a gun around. I mean, this is perfectly legal on this on this property. Okay, I went out there to the road to check the internet connection on the telephone pole or the cell phone pole out there. Well, a fucking cop comes around the fucking corner, comes out and points his gun at me. You think I'm going to reach for anything on my body with that <clears throat> fucking cop pointing his gun at me? Uh, no. Sorry. See? I, I don't know. It just it's crazy. But, I don't know, you know, people make make stupid mistakes, I guess. I mean, yeah, but this one was a deadly one. <laughs> Sad. <clears throat> well, it's kind of like, you know, when um, when I was arrested for the misdemeanor assault that, uh, that I got hit with, I was being backed into a corner by, by, a, by, a, by, a, by, by what I thought was, and saw as a very crazy woman. She was backing me up, backing me up, trying to punch me in the face and everything else. So I took a blind swing, and my thumbnail caught her above her, her uh, above her right eye. And for that, I got arrested. Now, in hindsight, should I have swung my arm out like I did? Nope. Shouldn't have. But at the same time, at the same time, I had, I had a right, you know, to try and stop her from making, from doing anything. Because in one hand, she did have a knife. So while my 
thumb brushing her eyebrow, you know, caused her to get a cut above the eye. In, to me, it was self-defense. But at the time, I, blo- I literally blocked out what, you know, everything that I saw, with the exception of her fist flying in my face. You know, they say women can't be that dangerous. I say bullshit. Women can be dangerous. Just as dangerous as us guys. And anybody who says they can't, remember Madame Curie? Now, what are you going to do, you know? All right. So let's see here. And by the way, for those of you watching on YouTube and wondering what's been going on, unfortunately, for some odd reason, my, my YouTube connection dropped. So a lot of what was being said in regards to Lavoy Finicum, you probably don't know about, but I will make it, an, an make, it a, make a point to post in the description on YouTube the link to this mix to the Mixler broadcast. This way you can hear everything that you know that went on. Including my little bout of frustration when I was being inter- when when I kept when I had a couple of interruptions while trying to read the description of the of the timeline of events that was on this animated uh, item that I had right in front of my face. And for my trouble, I get yelled at by someone, you know, saying, what is your problem? My problem is very simple. I do not like, you know, being interrupted in small or in large part when I'm trying to read something that is, you know, very important to the topic that I brought to the table. You want to comment on it? You want to agree to it? Whatever. Wait till I finish reading the damn thing first. That's all I ask. It's not the first time this person has done this to me either. You know, have a little common courtesy. And remember that, you know, this is my broadcast. I do tend to get a little frustrated. And if nobody likes it, well, find something else. Or go back and start your own again. Either way, you know, if you don't like the, if you don't, if you can't wait until I finish reading something and you, you, you don't like the way I run this broadcast, find something else to listen to. That's all I'm saying. And you'll notice I'm not saying it with anger either. I'm just saying it very matter of factly. The only thing I ever ask is that, you know, the people give me the opportunity to finish reading what I'm reading. You know, don't jump, don't jump in while I'm in the middle of, of reading something and say, oh, I agree with you on that. And then start going into a monologue or whatever, because that's happened to me too many times. I'm asking very politely, and I'm sure that the person who's listening, who, 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 who was on here with a a little while ago is listening somewhere and understands, you know, at least have a little common courtesy. And if you don't like my attitude, when I get frustrated, take a hike, go find something else to listen to. Okay. People do get frustrated. People do get uptight. I am one of those kind of people. Everyone that comes here knows that there's a chance that may happen and you're just going to have to deal with it. If you don't, if you can't move on, that goes for anyone. Not just one person, but for everyone, simple, common courtesy and common sense.
Now, let's see here. Remember that Hawaii, that judge in Hawaii gunslinger that decided he was going to uh, do something with the travel ban again? Again, yeah. <laughs> well, it seems uh, Jeff Sessions had something to say about that. He slim, he simply laid down, the, laid the smack down on this on this Hawaii judge. Attorney General Jeff Sessions releases an, released announcements after Hawaii judge puts new cutoff focus on the Trump organization's travel limitation from six Muslim nations. Now, the judge is by and by allowing passage of grandparents, grandchildren, and different relatives into the United States. In the request issued last Thursday, government region court judge Derek Watson also found that any parish with ties to resettlement relationship to resettlement relationship in the United States that can persuade them should be prohibited from the travel boycott. Now, Jeff Sessions discusses the travel ban, the incomparable court standards uh, in a YouTube video, and I'm going to... i got to attempt to... Uh, there we go. I'll play the audio from this. Go. Bringing it up on the other board. Oh, Thank you, Mr. To, Secretary. Right? And good morning to all of you. One of the Justice Department's top priorities is to protect the United States from threats to our national security. Therefore, I want to discuss two points. First, the national security basis of this order, and second, the Department of Justice's role in defending the lawful orders of the President of the United States. First, as President Trump noted in his address to Congress, the majority of people convicted in our courts for terrorism-related offenses since 9-11 came here from abroad. We also know that many people seeking to support or commit terrorist acts will try to enter through our refugee program. In fact, today more than 300 people, according to the FBI, uh, who came here as refugees are under an FBI investigation today for potential terrorism-related activities. Like every nation, the United States has a right to control who enters our country and to keep out those who would do us harm. This executive order seeks to protect the American people as well as lawful immigrants by putting in place an enhanced screening and vetting process for visitors from six countries. Three of these nations are state sponsors of terrorism. The other three have served as safe havens for terrorist countries, countries where governments have lost control of their territory to terrorist groups like ISIL or Al-Qaeda and its affiliates. This increases the risk that people are admitted here from these countries may belong to terrorist groups or may have been radicalized by them. We cannot compromise our nation's security by allowing visitors entry when their own governments are unable or unwilling to provide the information we need to vet them responsibly or when those governments actively support terrorism. This executive order responsibly provides a needed pause we can, so we can carefully review how we scrutinize people coming here from these countries of concern. Second, the Department of Justice believes that this executive order, just as the first executive order, is a lawful and proper exercise of presidential authority. 
This Department of Justice will defend and enforce lawful orders of the President consistent with the core principles of our Constitution. The executive is empowered under the Constitution and by Congress to make national security judgments and to enforce our immigration policies in order to safeguard the American public. Terrorism is clearly a danger for America and our people. The President gets briefings on these dangers and emerging threats on a regular basis. The federal investigative agencies, the intelligence community, the Department of State, the Department of Homeland Security, and the United States military report to the President. Knowing the President would best possess such extensive inf information, our founders wisely gave the executive branch the authority and the duty to protect the nation. This executive order is a proper exercise of that power. Now, I will turn things over to our able Secretary John Kelly of the Department of Homeland Security. John? Thank you. getting something for my coffee, namely some cow juice, and, well, stuff happens. So what do you think, Gunslinger? Gun? Okay, see Boyd's in the chat and on the Skype line here, so let me bring him on board. Hello, Boyd. Hey, George. What's going on? Not much, really. We were just talking about the Lavoy Finnegan shooting a moment ago. Oh, yeah? Yep. Now, tell me if, if this makes any sense to you. Three state troopers were found to have to have lawfully shot him. Okay. Yeah. But an FBI agent has been indicted. Something is not making any sense here. <clears throat> yeah. Um. You do you remember the uh, the case involving the Oregon refuge? Yep. Yeah, I remember. I remember seeing the video too. Uh, the only way I could see that happening. Is that the FBI agent shot first, and at the sound of gunfire, uh, the state police opened up, well, not they, knowing where the, not knowing who shot the first shot. Well, according to to the information that came out, the FBI agent's gunshots did not make contact with Finnegan. Plus. Someone shot from, shot from up in the trees because there is a bullet hole in the roof of the, of the truck on an angle that clearly shows it went in on an angle and out the passenger window in the back seat behind Finnegan's, behind the driver's side. Now, if that was the FBI agent's shot, it missed him. But what doesn't, what still doesn't make sense to this day is, 
Finnegan was on Finnegan and the people inside the vehicle were on their way to meet with the sheriff. Yeah. What was the reason for having a roadblock up? If say they or they knew that that was the case. Well, the sheriff is the ultimate law enforcement inside the uh, county. They were going to go the, talk uh, to him. Sheriff brought in on brought in on the roadblock. They didn't want him there. They ambushed him uh, so that he could not make it their meeting with the sheriff. Because if the sheriff took him into custody, then the feds couldn't uh, couldn't get him. So then, the feds and the state troopers. If the sheriff ha is the ultimate authority for the county, why were the, why are why are why is one FBI agent being sacrificed in that in that context then, and the troopers being told that they that they, that they were justified in their shooting? How were they justified? Did Finnicum have a gun in his hand? Yes, he had a nine millimeter in his pocket. But not in his hand. I don't know. I can't tell you uh, anything about it because they, uh, their actions were what I consider Ruby Ridge and, and Waco type action, which were extremely uncalled for. Well, there's still more to this than than is being let on, and I, I and I think I think uh, Attorney General Sessions should look into this. Yeah. And uh, by the way. Want to welcome uh, there uh, uh, a nice couple that I met here in, in, here here in the complex. They are in the chat room and watching me on YouTube. I think that's how they. I think that's what they meant. Howdy, howdy, neighbors! Welcome to the broadcast. This is just this is just a, a little impromptu deal on a Saturday night, but we get what we need every time. But you know, Boyd, I, I, I think, like I was starting to say, if Attorney General Sessions uh, were to look at the, were to have his his Justice Department look at it real close, okay, I mean look at it real close, because the Justice Department that was in place looking at at the case. Last year was under Loretta Lynch. Yeah. And I don't trust Loretta Lynch as far as I can throw her. And that ain't very far. Yep. Yeah, you know, 
I just can't say anything about it right now. It's been so long ago. But I do remember seeing the uh, the video and never could understand why they shot. I think that they went on the they were going on the premise that he was reaching for his weapon. Yeah, when he was stumbling around in the snow. Yeah. Now here's what I don't understand. He kept saying to them repeatedly, "Don't shoot. Don't shoot." So what was the point of of gunning him down like that? And it was it, it was I gotta go back to the. Gotta go back to the. I'm gonna try and bring Mike on while I'm doing this. Let's see here. Hey, guys. Hey, Mike. Hey, it's Mike. Hey, 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 how are you? how's everybody? I started to get worried. I said, oh, shit. I mean, I am us I am us right now, and I just stopped at a 7-Eleven to buy a set of earbuds so I could talk to you while I'm driving back. And I said, shit. I said, now I picked up the earbuds and nobody's going to be on Skype. What the fuck? Good. So I didn't you're gonna be able to on it. Skype. Yeah, I was on there. But how's everybody doing tonight? Hanging in there. I'm coming back. Hanging in there from... than be hanged. I always say. Yeah, that's true. I'm coming back from uh, the Greek festival in Centerville, which is part of Hyannis. Um, you know what? I, I didn't think I was going to stay there that long. We went earlier in the afternoon. We get there about five o'clock, and we ate. We had Lisa's dad with us, and then. He wanted to sit in the car because the music was too loud, the DJ. And I said, you know what, I'll, I'll drive you guys home. And uh, and I'll drive back to the festival. Because a bunch of the people that were there told me, oh, so-and-so's coming and this one's coming. And it was like old home week. I was seeing people I haven't seen in 35, 40 years. Holy shit. And then the band kept asking me to get up on stage and play. I was like, ah. So I got up and I played two songs with him. That was that was fun. For shits and giggles. You know, I had, I had, a, I had a good time. But uh, a lot of people. That place was packed. There were thousands of people at this place. But now, fuck, I'm tired. Look what time it is. It's almost one in the morning. Well, we were just talking about uh, the the the, <clears throat> the Finicum case. Yeah, that's something, isn't it? It's getting more interesting. That's for sure. We get a new president in and a new attitude from the Justice Department, and now they're looking at everything, going, "What the fuck happened back here?" Yeah, but what I don't understand is why the why three state troopers who shot at him, okay, were ju were, were were cleared in this, and they say it was they say he was just a, they say that they're saying that they're they're justified in in what in, in their in their shooting of, of Finnegan. The FBI, but the FBI agent, guy gets 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 nailed. The FBI guy is the one with the scope on it that took him out. No, they're saying that his his shots never hit Finnegan. The FBI guy? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's not what I heard. All right, well, that's something different. Hey, how are you? Hey, Tony. Tony, what you doing? Ah, uh, just. This fucking phone I bought. This new phone, it's it sucks. It's horrible. What brand is it? I'm gonna go. It's LG. 
Oh, I thought those were supposed to be good. I thought so too. I had this one of the first phones I had, the flat phone was the LG. It was great. But I got that one I got that one from Verizon. This might this must be a cheaper brand, I don't know. I'm gonna bring it back Monday morning back to uh the booth store. Oh sure. So, George, who's prosecuting right now? Is it the Justice Department going after him? Who's going after the... the who's pressing charges? Hang on a second. Let me bring up the... I gotta pull the story back up here. Let's see here. Scanning through real fast here. <laughs> Justice is, is, is through the... the uh, according to this, the indictment stems from a year-long investigation by the U.S. Justice Department Inspector General. Yep. Hmm. But the Inspector General was under Obama at the time. So I have a little, I have, I have a bit of a suspicious nature in that. But they're saying that the agent will be, uh, will be identified when summoned to appear Wednesday in U.S. District Court in Portland. Now, what makes no sense here? Okay. What absolutely made no sense in this was why and I gotta get down to it here to the to the oh, where is it? Here we are. There was a bullet hole in the roof of the vehicle. And I took a screen capture of the video from the video that showed it. Yeah. Finnegan was standing outside the vehicle when the shot when the shot was taken. It went through the roof and out the driver's side rear passenger window. So, something very strange in that. Now, if I can find the animation that, that helped me to, to understand this. Ah, here we go. To me, that means that whoever the shooter was, he was up in a tree. He was up exactly. high. Exactly. Exactly. Shooting down. We knew there was snipers. We knew that. Yes. So I thought it was a sniper that shot him. He sh he took a shot at him, but missed. You had to take more than one shot. Cocoa powder. There are three shots from behind Finnicum. All right. Now, according to to the information, if I can get back, if I can get it back here. Now, prosecutors found the state troopers' actions justified because it was three state, it was two state troopers that fired the shots that killed Finnegan. And the article FBI, says and the that? FBI's actions are still under investigation. But the article says that it was the state troopers that killed him. Yeah, well, there's a there's an animation that's that's saying that it was that two state troopers, one close to Finnicum, between he was the, the, this one trooper was between the vehicle, the 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 police vehicles and Finnegan. The second officer was further back. 
and shot at Finnegan. So these all th these troopers were clear. Now, what what was strange in all this is the fact that the one trooper who came out of the woods came out with his with his gun in his hand, put the gun in its holster, and took out the taser. And this was just before Finnegan was, was fatally shot. So I don't understand something here. Finnegan reached into his, you know, reached into his jacket. That's when the shots, that's when the fatal shots were, were taken. He did not have a 9mm in his hand when he was shot. It was in his pocket. So somehow, the troopers jumped the gun, but they've been cleared of, they've been cleared of this. Now, Boyd said something regarding the sheriffs, because Finnegan and his party were on their way to the sheriff's department for a meeting. It comes on that day in January, on January 26th. Right. So why was the FBI and the state police involved in a roadblock? I would think that they would have been informed of the fact that he was going to the sheriff's office to meet with the sheriff. They don't care. It's a chance for them to get them. They don't care where they're going. They're on the move. It's an opportunity for them to get them on the road. But, and Boyd, correct me if I'm wrong, didn't you say that the Sheriff's Department is the ultimate authority in that county? Yeah. The Sheriff's Not Department is the ultimate authority in every county. Right. Not in the United mind. States. Huh? Not in the mind of the FBI agents. Well, not well. FBI, FBI thinks it's national. Those guys are not national. There's no national sheriff's department. We are the FBI. Fuck you. That's yeah. the attitude. That's the attitude. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But constitutionally speaking, they right. are the ultimate authority. Yeah. Right. But these guys took over federal property, so the feds are involved. State police, because the governor and everything else, state police are involved. There's a larger law enforcement agencies than the local sheriffs. But wouldn't it now, what we don't know to involve the local sheriffs too? No. There's egos that are involved in the law enforcement. How many times in a movie have you seen we're taking over jurisdiction? Thank you for helping out. And now you can go away. We're handling this case with the fed with the feds. That's how they work. What we don't know. What we don't no, the know. The feds don't care. What we don't know is the ballistics. We don't know what rounds were in him, and that would tell us whether it came from a rifle or a pistol, and whose pistol it came from. Also, remember, well, and I keep I keep loving to bring this up. Look at Waco. What happened at Waco? The sheriff could have handled them. The sheriff could have told the Fed to get the fuck out of the out of my county. I can handle them, okay? But no, see, I didn't do it. <laughs> Somebody flushing a toilet? Tony, you flushing a toilet? No, I'm not doing nothing. Well, your your oh, phone's making a your, whole lot of noise. I thought it was your your new phone doing something. No. Like a, a fan in the background or something? No. Hold on. Let me know if it stops. Yeah, you're quiet now. It stopped? Yep. Yep. Uh, if, the if the fan can see your microphone, we can hear it. All right, sorry. Now, here's the, here's the, here's the, here's the, the situation, though. With with this uh, shooting of of, of Lavoy Finnegan, a 
Okay. Uh, the person is being charged. I'm trying to find it here. Hang on a second. Bear with me. Uh, went a little too far, I think. I know it ain't that far down. Well, apparently the 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 man the uh, the the FBI agent is being charged with obstruction of justice. Uh, falsifying a, a report and so forth. I'm trying to find the exact charges. Uh, the indictment says that actually they gave his name. W. Joseph Asterita is the uh, agent's name. Now, according to this, the indictment says that Asterita, who served as a member of the elite FBI hostage rescue team, falsely stated he had not fired his weapon during the, the attempted arrest of Robert Lavoie Finnegan. When he knew then and there that he had fired his weapon. Asterita is accused of lying to three supervisory FBI agents, concealing from Oregon investigators that he fired his weapon and failing to alert the FBI's shooting incident response team about his shooting as required. Defendant acted with intent with the intent to hinder, delay, and prevent the communication of information from the Oregon State Police to the Federal Bureau of Investigations relating to the possible commission of a federal offense. This is according He's to in trouble. Hmm? He's in trouble. He's in trouble. Sounds like he's fucked. They probably got one of the bullets out of that body or found one of the bullets from his weapon. And uh, he's in trouble. But still, I don't see anything saying how many bullets were in his body. I remember there were two different autopsies and they were conflicting. Three bullets. Remember the family? I thought there was more from the, the family's autopsy. Wasn't it? That's fucked up. According to the information I saw, they counted three bullets. But see, what they're not telling us is if they're pistol caliber or rifle caliber. Hmm. So we're guessing. So we don't know what, whose rounds, what. The, one the troop, state police. The one trooper that, that shot was carrying an AR-15. The other was carrying an AR-10, an AR-10 rifle. I thought you said the holster weapon. He had a pistol. That was the officer that came out of the woods. Oh. Uh, the two that shot Finnicum were near the vehicles. 50%, One was near a vehicle further away from Vinnegum. The other was near the, the police vehicles close to the ve to the truck. But they're only giving us a partial story. They're not telling us he had one 5.56 five, five, round in him. He had one 9mm round in him. And he had a three oh eight round in him. So no, they're not going into, into a full detail. They're not telling us. Because that'll, that'll tell us what exactly. If you had a sniper up for the tree, chances are he probably had a 308. Right. The other guy down low, yeah, he's going to have an AR, 5.56. Five, Handgun, probably 9mm. I don't know if the, what the feds yeah. change now if, or what they're carrying, but most of them were 9mm. But that would then we'd be able to sort out who, what, what the fuck. But we don't have the story. We don't have the full story. We're guessing. Yeah. Find the original Hawaiian chocolate factory, which is 
which is uh, nestled. But the one uh, thing that's interesting uh, about that Fed, the FBI agent lying, falsifying stuff. At the back of the point, he's going to be in trouble. They got there's more to that story with that Fed. But okay. Yeah, I, I think there's there's going to be a lot more to that story. Uh, <clears throat> There is more to that story. When you think about it, because okay, three state troopers. Well, actually, two state troopers were cleared in the fatal in his shooting. That their their shots were justified. But how could they be justified if he would if he did not have a weapon in his hands? Because he reached. The minute you reach for something, when they're telling you freeze or get down or anything else, it's it's open season, man. You're a target. They're not going to wait for you to pull out and, if, and give you a chance course, to pull out a weapon. All right. Well, why why didn't they why didn't they use? Tear gas, taser, or taser. It's too far away. Huh? Too far, too far away. They're not close enough. To the the one coming taser. out of the woods was close enough. And get, he was already shot. No, he hadn't been shot until until after the guy switched from his hand, his weapon to his taser. And the two the two troopers. On the other side of Finnicum, by the road, were the ones that took the shot, that took the kill shot. Okay. But at that point, he had reached in his jacket or pocket or whatever, and that's why it doesn't matter what the guy had a taser in his hand. The minute he reached for that, in their minds, he's reaching for a weapon, and they're going to open fire. So the guy that traded his 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 um, his firearm for his taser didn't have enough time to to use his taser. No, because Finnegan reached in his pocket, and that that set off the other guys to open fire on him. If Finnegan hadn't moved, then probably that guy could have gotten closer and hit him with the taser. Taser doesn't have a fifty a fifty foot range. It's not really a long, long range. You got to be kind of close to the person because it's connected to the handset with a with a wire. You know what I mean? So he was probably trying to get close, close enough to use it. But Finnegan reached into his pocket, and that was it. He's dead. I don't think he, you know, watching the video, I don't think he reached for his pocket. I think he was just stumbling around in the snow. Could have been. I mean, the pocket that they're saying he reached for, was the gun in that pocket? Don't know. We don't know. We'll never know. Yeah, I think at this point, that's one question that probably will never get answered. Not unless it goes to court with this FBI guy. Yeah, and then we might get more facts when that comes out. You're right. But in the meantime, they're giving us just enough, but not enough to really make it just a little bit, not enough to do to make any hardcore evaluations of it. Um sucks. That's what law enforcement covers their ass. But the good thing is we've got a new head for the Department of Justice, a new head for the FBI, and they're going to want answers. And they answer to Trump. 
Right, but the Trump. new head of the FBI has not been officially brought in yet. He's still in, he's still doing the hearings. Yeah, I thought he was the acting head right now. No, right now he's dealing with the Senate uh, Judiciary Committee. Oh. In order to become the official director of the FBI. So, so who's the acting uh, head of the FBI right now then? He is, but he... Oh, right now he has to he has to focus on on the hearings. No, the guy the guy who's in the hearing is not the acting FBI director. The acting FBI director <laughs> is. Um, oh God, who he was the the assistant act. Uh, he was the uh, is his last next name one spelled in W R A Y. Yeah, no. No, Ray. That that guy is the guy who's they have up for nomination. All right, hold on a second. Is that the one? Is that the one that Comey suggested? Yeah. yeah. That's the one that Comey suggested, huh? Let me look this guy up. Tain a second. Yeah. No, his. Uh, He's the guy whose wife was uh, given all that money by by Hillary oh, during shit. her campaign in '16, and uh, then uh, shortly thereafter, uh, Comey made a statement that Hillary's you know off scot free. Yep. Yeah. Well, Andrew George McCabe is the acting director of the Yeah, time. McCabe. All right, I just got home. I'm going to have to try to sneak in and not wake everybody up. So I'm going to mute myself for a little bit. And I'll come back in. I'll be here, though. All right. <clears throat> now, let me see here. Christopher Ray. That's who this that's who the guy is. Let's see here. Well, he's fifty years old he's fifty years old, born in New York City. He's a Yale graduate. And that's about as much as I dare bring up on that. According to uh, theweek.com, Christopher Ray seems like an honest, eminently qualified FBI director. Don't confirm him. Hmm, wonder why. The craziest thing about Christopher Ray's Wednesday confirmation hearing to be FBI director was how normal it seemed. Yes, he was asked about James Comey. Yes, he was asked about Donald Trump Jr. And yes, he offered assurances that he'd be an independent director who would resist exhortations to loyalty by his bosses. My loyalty, Ray told his Senate inquisitors, is to the Constitution and the rule of law. Ray said all the right things. He probably even meant them. He seems honest and eminently qualified, but given the shadow of scandal that enveloped the hearing, it's remarkable that no senator stood up and said, no, no, we're not going to do this. Everybody, even Democrats, seemed to be on board with the idea that President Trump should get to choose Comey's successor. 
<clears throat> That's crazy. Ray may be a worthy nominee, but he shouldn't be confirmed to be FBI director. Not now, at least. I have a feeling Joel Mathis, who wrote this piece, is the one saying that. There's an old legal concept known as the fruit of a poison tree. The idea is that if evidence is tainted, say if police got a confession without reading a suspect as rights, then all the information learned as a result of that evidence is inadmissible in court. The message to lawyers is clear. You don't get to take advantage of doing things the wrong way. American government is not a court of, is not a, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, American government is not a court of law. But with President Trump, there's plenty of reason to think that the tree, the whole damn orchard, in fact, is filled with toxins. Does anybody else get the impression that this is a liberal piece and it's a liberal slant? Starting to wonder. Remember, Ray is only up for the job of FBI director because Trump fired Comey in a self-admitted attempt to try and quash the Russia investigation. Okay, that's it. I'm not reading any further. This is a fucking liberal hatchet job. Incredible. That's sickening. Well, there's really nothing further about the hearing or anything either. Well, this is interesting. Politico says... Democrats signal support for quick vote on FBI nominee Ray. Hmm. Senate Republicans are pushing for a speedy vote in Christopher Ray's confirmation to lead the FBI, and at least one powerful Democrat is willing to help. Uh, guys, I hope you're sitting down. Yeah. Gunslinger, you're not going to believe this, but that one sen powerful Democrat is none other than California Senator Dianne Feinstein, the top Democrat on the Judiciary Committee. Said Go, she figure. Huh? Go figure. Huh? Go figure. Yeah. Uh, she said she believes Ray should get a committee vote next week, although any senator who sits on the panel could ask that it be held over for seven days. It's been the tradition, Feinstein said, referring to the fact that nominees for FBI director have rarely faced the one-week delay, and I think there's no reason not to. Feinstein noted that the nine Democrats on the Judiciary Committee hadn't yet discussed whether Ray's nomination should be delayed. A routine practice in the committee that gives senators more time to vet candidates. Still, Senate Judiciary Committee Chairman Chuck Grassley, Republican from Iowa, said Thursday that nominees for FBI director generally haven't been delayed. And he scheduled a committee vote for Ray for July 20th. Earlier this week, Senator Richard Blumenthal, Democrat from Connecticut, said in an interview before the confirmation hearing that he would favor a delay. Because I think, as with any hearing, there will likely be questions. Now, still, the comments from Feinstein show just how little opposition and concern there is from Democrats about Ray. 
currently a lawyer in private practice who also served in the Justice Department during the George W. Bush administration. A handful of Democratic senators said during Ray's hearing before the Judiciary Committee Wednesday that they would back his confirmation to replace James Comey, who was abruptly fired by President Donald Trump in May. And Ray's Democratic support grew on Thursday when Senator Mark Warner, the vice chairman of the Senate Intelligence Committee, said he would vote for his confirmation after meeting privately with him. I am likely to support his confirm I'm likely to support his confirmation, said Senator Chris Coons, Democrat from Delaware, in an interview Thursday. He answered directly and clearly a whole series of questions about his independence, his willingness to resist an overreaching president, and his determination to provide Special Prosecutor Bob, Mul Bob Mueller with the resources and freedom to continue his investigation that he needs and deserves. I got a bad feeling about this, guys. There's something very strange. Democrats so re that willing to let this nominee go forward? And if this nominee has indicated that he has a, that he's willing to resist and to re, that he's willing to resist an overreaching president, that tells me right there there's something very wrong with this picture. Something very wrong. Any thoughts, guys? Well, it would appear that well. it would sound wrong. I don't know, but knowing them, wow, it just. Doesn't surprise me, not one bit, what the idiots are doing, you know, especially when you got Frankenstein involved with it. So anytime that Frankenstein's involved with something, you know, <laughs> it ain't good for nobody. <laughs> Go ahead. Boyd? Um, I don't know. I haven't been paying attention. To that uh, hearing and stuff, so I didn't listen to to uh, any of it, so I don't know what's what's going on. I'll be right back. I gotta let the dog out. Yeah. How about you, Tony? I hear. Yeah, I don't have too much. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you fine. Oh, all right. Just want to make sure my mic is on because I didn't. This phone was new. It's just typical. It seems like typical bullshit. Well, you heard what I just read. I'm sure. Yeah. Any thoughts? Nothing that nothing that would stand out. Mike's not in a position to respond, I guess. Otherwise, yeah, his, his mic, his mic is off, and uh, I'm sure he has a, you know, he has a, what he, how he feels about it. But I just think it's something, just so typical of the situation. Well, I think. But, I think uh, but what do I know? You know. Well, I think there's there's a. It was definitely something very odd when the leading Democrat on the on the Senate Judiciary Committee, namely Dianne Feinstein, likes 
a nominee that much to want to vote quickly. It seems even more strange that that all the Democrats on the Judiciary Committee seem to like this guy. Now, between you, me, and the four winds, um, there's something very, very strange with that very picture. Because no Democrat in a high-profile position like like uh, Feinstein is going to back a guy that much. And then, of course, there's the other the other thing too. The Democrats were asking him pretty pretty pointed questions that made it that made him sound like he's going to do what he wants to do regardless of whether Trump likes it or not and the other thing that 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 struck me rather odd in this is the fact that <clears throat> You know, they they like him, right? They do like him. But he serves. I mean, if he just if he goes against Trump, that's not going to bode well for for his longevity in the job. Because the FBI director, <clears throat> the FBI director, serves at the <clears throat> at the uh, pleasure of the president. Right. We know. Now, you, who? I, I couldn't quite get the words out on that one. Now, who suggested this guy? Who brought this guy's name up to replace Comey? <clears throat> well, Trump stated that uh, Trump is the one who nominated him for the director's job. Are you sure? I, I, I thought Comey somehow had an input on this, which everybody said, wait a minute, this guy's being fired or canned. What's he doing appointing anybody? Or what's he doing suggesting or even getting involved in the, in the decision? I remember there was some sort of comment like that a while back. No, that, that, had, no, that comment had to do with uh, Robert Mueller, not with, uh, not with this guy Ray. All right, I wonder how Trump found this guy and why he chose this guy. That's a good question. You know, uh, for Pelosi to back it, maybe Pelosi feels that this guy would be an asset or controllable or it would be beneficial for the Democrats to have this guy in place. I don't know if there's got to be a reason for Pelosi to get in there, which is scary. It's like, what the fuck is she doing? All of a sudden she likes this guy? That is... That raises uh, a couple of flags. It's not, and it's not just Feinstein. It seems the in, the entire Democratic, nope. all nine Democrats on the on the Senate Judiciary Come Committee. Now, why, now, that's, now, now, to me, that's a little strange. Why would all nine members of, of the Democratic side of the uh, of, of of the Senate Judiciary Committee like? A Trump nominee. And, in, and add to that, okay. Let's see, do I still have it up here? Even Chris Coons, Democrat from Delaware, says he's likely to support his confirmation. And Coons, if I'm not. He's, he's one guy, but then there's Mark Warner, the vice chairman of the Senate Intelligence Committee, who said he would vote for his confirmation after meeting him with him privately. Oh, now, this I mean, guy that's Ray one... was a, is, a, is a lawyer in private practice who also served in the Justice Department during the George W. Bush administration. All right. 
So he's no <clears throat> he's no, no stranger beginner. to um, to the Justice Department or, or 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 anything like that. But what I found very odd is this is this right here. When Dianne Feinstein, the top Democrat on the Judiciary Committee, said she believes Ray should get a committee vote next week, although any senator who sits on the panel could ask that it be held over for seven days. They might, you know, what they might want Max. Come here. What they, I'm outdoors. I'm, I'm walking, Max. And just to let you know, uh, the committee vote is is scheduled for July 20. It could be that they don't want to delay. They do not want the FBI sitting headless for very long. And they're really hoping that there's going to be more coming out of uh, the FBI that they can use against Trump. Uh, the Democrats could be praying. So I, I don't know. Who knows what they're thinking? And uh, I, I don't even give a shit. It, it, it doesn't, I mean, to me, it doesn't matter. It's, it's like, it's nothing but the political game of the machine in Washington. And, you know, it, it's, it's all a fucking game with these assholes. At all. Max. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what I said. It just sounds, just sounds typical bullshit to fucking yeah. Democrats. It's going on for nine months now. Yeah. Nine, nine months now they've been trying to just strike back any, any the way only, they can. But the, but the only thing with this might be the difference is they want the FBI to have somebody as a head in place. They don't want it headless. It's not like the ATF. ATF went without a, a, a head. They had an acting uh, director for a fucking, I forget how, how long, a long time. But nobody yeah. gives a shit about the ATF because it doesn't affect the average person. Yeah, but the, but FBI, FBI, the FBI is a different story now. And also when there's a potential of getting some ju some real nice juicy shit out of there that they can use against Trump, <gasps> put a director in there. Get the guy in. Um, my comment, though, on this is that I w I'm not so... Uh, worried or uh, concerned that Feinstein uh, may be back in this guy. And the reason for that is uh, I've seen her on various occasions uh, come out and say stuff that uh, you would not uh, expect, expect from a Democrat. Yeah. You know, and she and she voted exactly the way uh, 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 she was speaking, and you know, while you know, ninety percent of the stuff that she does is uh, to me is bullshit. Uh, you know, liberal shit. But uh, when it comes to the judiciary and stuff like that, I think she's got her head on. Now, in that article, George, did it say anything at all about Republican uh, I, support I, I, for I this? I can't hear you. I hear a crinkle. Uh, was it a Chris, Chris Crinkle or a regular Crinkle? It was a Mike Crinkle. Crinkling. Now the the question the question I have uh, for you, George, is uh, in that article. Does it have anything at all to say about Republican support? No. No, it doesn't actually. Not that I can. Not that I found. Although it does, it does make clear that the, the Republicans, you know, most likely in this case would would not delay the vote. Right. Traditionally, there is. It doesn't make sense to delay the vote for the FBI director because 
the FBI director is the top cop in the in in, in that federal agency. So it's highly unlikely they would. There's, there's something not right with this. I, I, I just can't put my finger on it. doesn't make sense. Of course, then again, it's Washington, D.C. Does anything in Washington, D.C. ever make sense? You know? Trump. Okay. The one, there's, one, the... there's one person in, in D.C. that makes sense. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. They get the, they get the fattest squirrels I've ever seen in my life. So what? When Lisa and I walked, we walked from uh, we walked from the from Congress over to the Lincoln Memorial there, mm -hmm. and all along that park, or whatever they call that thing, the the squirrels were so well fed; it was unbelievable. They were pat pudgy motherfuckers. They couldn't climb up trees. They were un it was unbelievable. They were going through the trash, people feeding them nuts and throwing stuff at them. And, man, and I said, look at this, the waste and abuse in Washington. It goes all the way down to the squirrels. They're all fat. Politicians all the way down to the squirrels. The mice are probably well, fucking I monsters. Think, I think people feeding the squirrels kind of helped, helped out with that one. Holy shit. <laughs> They're I biggins. Mean, that, that's just my guess, though. <laughs> Oh, shit. They didn't get fat on um, on uh, on liberal bullshit. That's for sure. Yeah, oh, that's a fact. But getting back to fin Finnegan, I think we're gonna have to wait until we get more info because they're not putting out a lot. No, they're not, and, and, and it's. You know, and like I said before, you know, as far as I'm concerned, you know, it seemed just a little too convenient that they had this road, they had a roadblock set up the way they did. They had a sniper in the tree. I mean, they were looking, <laughs> this may sound strange, but it seems almost like they were, they were looking to kill Finnegan. And the other people in the vehicle. I, George, it, we, we talked about that, and it seemed like it. It really seemed like it. I wouldn't be surprised. You know, like, Gunslinger keeps bringing up Waco. I mean, that mentality's not gone. It hasn't disappeared. No, it hasn't. No. Not by a long shot. But if that's the case, something's got to be. Something has to be done with that mentality. You know, if 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 there are people, yep, that are you know that 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 wear a badge and carry a gun, think that it's you know. okay to be, you know, assassins, basically, yeah. well, they need to, they need to be, they, they need to, see ya, nice having you here, but goodbye. Um, the thing, oh, go ahead. The thing I really, the thing I really want to know is. Why would they want to prevent him 
or prevent them from going to the county sheriff. I don't think they even give a shit. They don't. It doesn't matter to them in their minds. The sheriff, you know how the federal attitude towards local sheriffs. That's nice. You got a pretty badge. Have a nice day. We are the feds. I don't know what you are. There, there's an arrogance with the federal agents. Uh, that's how it is. You know, and uh, they're on a mission to get these guys, and they couldn't. They're in a touchy position where they couldn't storm. Um, the building when those guys were there so because they don't want to recreate Waco but once they're on the road it's open season that's their chance yeah <clears throat> but then again at the same time <coughs> excuse me how did they uh get their intel that they were going to the sheriff's office and that they were going to go on the road. Uh, they monitor everything. The phone calls, everything was being monitored. And I and I bet you the sheriff's department was sharing all info info with the feds too. They all know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. State police, the FBI, everybody knows what's going on. Yeah, you know, the only one that it, it seems like you know it was just too convenient. Now I'm sure the sheriff's department shared the information with with, with the state troopers and with the, the feds that Finnegan was on his way to a meeting with the sheriff. Now you would think they. They, they would, knowing this, they would turn around and and let Finnicum go to the sheriff because then he's in he could be brought in, put into custody right there on the spot, and no one had to be no one and no one had to die as a result. You know, I mean that that does that make sense to anyone? Makes sense to me. <laughs> yeah, but then uh, you know that sniper, that sniper wouldn't have had the opportunity to to throw a bullet away through the through the top of the car. True, very true. Mm -hmm. And that could be one of the reasons why he's in trouble because of the shot. You know, he uh, he made the shot, and it missed everybody. Now, what does that say about a sniper? Yeah, I'd like to know what he was using for a scope. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a uh, fuck. Yeah, because, Mike, um, I'll tell you what. Hold on a second here. I'll send it to you on, fa on Facebook. I mean, I could do a 300-yard shot with, with my fucking, with my M1A without even zeroing, zeroing my scope. I mean, because you get to know the weapon and everything, and if you're a sniper, and you, you're supposed to know that fucking rifle. That's your rifle every day, every time. You, it's the same one you're using. So that's quite a fucking miss for him to hit the roof and have the round come through the window. Um, it's pretty fucked up, but okay. There's, there's a, I just sent the screenshot in the Facebook chat. Uh, take a look at that. Okay, what? Yeah, I think we saw those pictures before. No, not this. We did not see this. That's the bullet. If you look at the bullet at the bullet hole, it's on an angle. Yeah. That yeah, that bullet hole went in the roof. On an angle and came out the passenger window in the back on the back seat, to the, on the driver's side of the, of the vehicle. So whoever took that shot, 
they were they were aiming for Finnegan. Now, Finnegan was out of the vehicle at that time. Yeah, he was out of the vehicle at that point. He was standing next to it when that shot obviously was taken. Because they said that, because in, in the one in the one piece that I read, the shot was the F, the FBI's shot did not did not hit Finnegan. Right. And yet, and yet, he um, he gets gun he gets shot. From two different angles, by state troopers. There's a lot to this. It's that there's there's a lot of unanswered questions. No, that's for sure. Yeah. Oh. Let's just hope the information comes out during the trial. You know, when he when he goes in there, I hope they I hope they have it open so at least somebody somebody from the media or somebody goes in there to get the information and I don't know if it's gonna be a closed hearing or open or what. Probably closed. Yeah, they didn't I say wouldn't in the doubt article it. whether it would be open or closed. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt it. Because he case in case something embarrassing comes out, they're going to want to squash it real fast. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, we were given the order to start, make sure that nobody that was in that truck comes out of it alive. Oh, okay, now I understand why there was a roof shot. Exactly. And then I, and then I took my shot, and they told me to stand down. All right, now it makes sense. All right, now let's look at the ballistics. You got th they're saying three rounds now that were in him. How many were five, 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 six, and how many were amp pistol ammunition? All right, and what that, and what gun did they come from? Right now we'll know which yeah which cop fired it and which yep. <clears throat> They know all this stuff. They they know ahead of time. They've already done fucking ballistics on the fucking on the uh, on the markings on each one of those projectiles. So they know the barrel of what gun those things came out of. They know who fired them. They know the whole story. It's just getting the truth out of them and getting them to tell it in open court or to a hearing is going to turn. Well, there's nothing really conclusive. We're not exactly sure. The markings that were on the... You know the deal. That's how it goes. It's part of the game. There could have been aliens that landed, came down with a spaceship, and had their own AR-15. We're not sure yet. We'll get back to you. You name it, they'll come up with an excuse for it. And all we can do is sit there and nod our pointy little heads and go, Okay, are we ready for episode number three? Tell us another story. Uh, it's and the game continues, but they know that they're walking a thin fucking line here because with this administration and a new head for the Justice Department, the old games might not work anymore. Sessions might come in behind the scenes. We'll never see him or hear him, but he's pulling the strings for that department now. All right. Um, <clears throat> hang on a second here. Let me let me open this. I'm gonna put a link in the chat room to the uh, animation. Yeah. Now I'll send it over to you guys that are that are not in the chat room on Facebook as well. And I want you to advance in the video. Advance to approximately a minute and 28 seconds. Actually, it's more like... Hold on a second. Go, go to a minute and 15 seconds. 
all right? Because at a minute and 15 seconds into the video, it shows in the graphic, in the animation, what they the want cars, us to see. Amongst the cars, you know, from the roadblock. There's going to be one, one of the, they're, 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 they're using blue figures for the state troopers and yellow figures I, I'm, I, for the FBI. And a red figure, of course, for Finnegan. And who made this up? Because that'll tell us well, this who was, wants this us to believe the story. By, by, the, by the Oregonian. Oh, the, the newspaper. Yeah. Now, the state trooper that was in the that was center of the three vehicles making up the roadblock. Okay, he moved in toward Finnicum. <sighs> so he moves in toward Finnicum, goes to the back of, of one of the, the block the roadblock cars, comes out just to the just to the passenger side of the vehicle. This trooper is armed with an AR-15 rifle. The second trooper, who is standing next to a vehicle further further away from the roadblock area, is armed with an AR-10 rifle. The state trooper that came out of the woods is armed with a handgun. He holsters it and takes out a taser. Finnegan has a loaded 9mm handgun in his pocket. The state troopers order Finnegan to get to the ground three times. He does not comply. Finnegan alternates between hands up and reaching for his jacket. The third time Finnegan reaches for his jacket, he is shot from behind three, from behind three times. Twice by the, the trooper close to the blockade vehicles. And the third time from, a, from, a, from the trooper further away. And at that point, Finnicum dies at the scene. Now, in, 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 in the graphic, it shows, it shows, a, it shows, a, 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 it shows a body with the location of the bullet wounds. The two shot the, 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 the trooper that shot twice got him in the shoulder and clo and up near the neck on the shoulder. The third shot was down near the waist, down near his waistline. The bullet the the, the, the third bullet the, the one bullet, the lone bullet down on the, on the lower part of his body migrated up and hit several organs including his heart. Prosecutors found the state troopers' actions justified. FBI actions, according to this, are still under investigation, according right. to law enforcement sources and police reports. Okay? Two shell casings disappeared. Now that sounds a little odd. Two shell casings disappeared. Well, one would think they'd be checking the area where the shots were taken and so forth. How could they have disappeared so easily? Police up your brass. But what good is it doing if they even hide, try to hide the brass? It doesn't matter. The shots have been taken. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, we're just going to have to wait and hold that, hold, you know, cross our fingers and hope that something comes out in the court. Because otherwise it's just rehashing it. And we went, we went over this when it first happened. Remember that it looked like he, he went up into the woods, up into the snowbank trying to go around. And he got this truck that's stuck in it, and uh, he tried to avoid. Remember, we, we went over this. We dissected it and uh, back then. when It didn't make any difference. It was fucked up. What they did was fucked up. And uh, there's a chance that there might be accountability on the table there. 
So, and you can't tell me. I mean, this is this isn't like the what was that police shootout with the bikers down there? What was that, New Mexico? Yeah, it was in Waco, Waco. also. Waco. Remember? No, that's involved. Now you have how many bikers got shot? How many? That's involved. This thing with Finnegan is not involved, and it's taken a year. They dragged their feet, George. Mm-hmm. They dragged their feet because Obama put them in there to drag their feet. But now Obama's gone. Their umbrella is gone. So now shit is coming forward. You know, it's, it's, it's not a good time to be a liberal. A lot of these guys lost their rabbis, man. They had protection under Obama and everything else and Comey. And I, the protection's gone now. You know, if there's another Fast and Furious, it's going to be aimed at politicians in Washington, not over the border in New Mexico. You know, there's going to be some sneaky shit done for entrapping some of these politicians that are out there. If I was Trump, first thing I'd do is go to the Justice Department and say, I want I want to find out how many pedophiles I've got in Congress and the Senate. Wrap them up. I want them with a, a gift wrap. I want them on my desk to... Give me, I'm giving you three days. I want the list of the names. Let's start cleaning. Let's start going after these fucks. All of them. So everything, accountability is out there. So maybe I'm hoping that this is part of it. You know, and it'll be a lesson for other FBI agents. If there's a secret agenda at work here and you guys were told to really fuck these guys up brutally, we're going to find out about it. And you're going to pay for it. <clears throat> Well, you know, look at look at what they did to the people down there at Waco. Okay, the FBI did that. That they were involved. And I love them too, Waco, because I've been down there and talked to them down there. Not I don't agree with their religious aspects or anything, right. but the way they handled it. There's so many things that doesn't make sense about that place down and, there. You know, and no, and nobody says a shit about it. They dropped it. They yeah, got away they with just, it. They, they just got away with it. it. They get they got away with murdering eighty six men, women, and children in yep. cold blood. Wow! So if they can get away with murdering eighty six men, women, and children, okay, uh, you think Finnegan means anything to that to them? No, no I've, I've no. said this a zillion times. Call me a conspiracy theorist. I don't give a fuck. Okay. All right. You're I a know. Conspiracy theorist. I don't give a fuck. Okay. okay. There you go. There you go. I talked to him. Okay. I, I met him. He did I'm ask not. for it. Well, yeah, I, mean, I, I don't give a fuck. No, 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 wait a minute. Now, no, Mark, let me let me ask you something there, partner. Uh, and 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 just just for clarification purposes, do you give a fuck? I don't give a fuck. Okay, but it's just Saturday. Check, but now, yeah, but the thing is, today's Sunday. Now he might give a fuck on Sunday. I know I give fucks on Monday. <laughs> I give fucks on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Sometimes I'm just too tired. I, I can't give a fuck at all. I mean, okay, if I'm too tired. Sometimes together. I just say fuck it, you know. I know that's it. Hey, listen, I don't give a fuck any day of the week. That's that's my philosophy. Yeah. I'm a nasty, ornery curmudgeon of a son of a bitch with an attitude and a, and, and a temper a mile wide. And honestly, I always say the same thing. Does anybody care? Does anybody really and, give a fuck? And George, I'm look at fuck. this. Another thing: all of the court trials. For the Bundys and everything else, have you heard anything really heavy duty in the news about those trials? Are they following them? No, no, they're, they're, not. no they're quiet about it. And those trials, these things are going on, but they're not covering it. The media does not. What they want, they don't want to rile up the the uh, conservatives. They don't want to rile up the fucking militias and everybody else. They want to placate them. Keep them quiet. Sedate them. Just quiet. Shh. Everything's nice. Calm down. Don't give them anything to... Don't add fuel to the fire. So, yeah, this is, this is a, a touchy area for them, for the government. They don't know what to do. And uh, you heard anything else about BLM? No. Actually, I haven't heard anything about no. that either. Yeah, I have no doubt that Washington under Obama told them, you will sit the fuck down and you will not do anything else because your name has been coming up way too much. They've been, be they've been behaving themselves. 
And now uh, Trump came in and screwed them up and reversed that thing about the parks, which and they the media won't admit that. Remember the thing about the uh, them naming all that property that the Bundys were using for grazing their their livestock, mm -hmm. and the federal government after the shootout with Finnegan and everything, the BLM came in and named all of that la land as park, uh, national park now, so that it can't be used for anything. That was their answer to how to do it, how to get rid of the Bundys, the thorn in their side. Right. But now, but now Trump came in and reversed that. So it's no longer. So BLM is, a lot of those people are worried about their careers, man. I was like, you know, fuck, we had a heyday. Well, we had eight years of Obama and environmentalists, and we were doing great, and we were had things under control, and uh-oh. Yeah, you kind of overdid it, didn't you, boys? Yeah. Uh, payback's a bitch. So they don't know what to do. I bet you they're looking at this thing with Finnegan. And, and like, how do we do this? How do we handle this? We'd like it to go away. Because they don't want to wake anybody up or remind anybody. And they don't want militia people riled up. And I bet you anything that the Bureau of Land Management, you're not going to see them active doing nothing right now. I think Trump has told them already to get rid of their guns. Yeah. I hope so. I, I hope so. Also, the night that Finnegan was shot, Oregonian put out a video from Ammon Bundy, who was in custody. And I believe Ammon Bundy was one of the people in the, in the truck with him, with Finnegan mm -hmm. at the time. Now, I've Ooh, got I... that video queued up. <laughs> so let's take a listen to the audio and see what, See, and, and, and refresh the memory and get a little memory refresher here. We were then invited by, we had several meetings in all surrounding counties set up. We were invited first by Grant County. Who, who invited you? Uh, there was a, a group, a, 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 a group of, you know, just individuals as far as I know. I don't know if they were part of the, like an association or whatever. But, and, and they, um, spoke with the sheriff and the sheriff wanted to be there and supported the meeting as far as I know. Mm -hmm. I don't want to put words in his mouth. But in our understanding there was going to be three or four hundred people that was there. And so when we were headed to, to Grant County, we were headed with weapons of laptops, projectors, and PA systems. And they attacked us, literally ambushed us, with a standing army. And um, and but that is that is the nature of this, and we we were posing no threat to anybody. Any never did we ever have be a, a pose a threat to anybody, and and never would we. Would that's not what we were about. Were you surprised? I mean, did you anticipate that? Well, at some point they might move in and 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 act to as get we, us off the refuge. Or? Well, as we continue to you know communicate with them, look. We're not hurting anybody, and if you come in here and, and basically attack or raid, it's only over a building, right? And and, and I guess they, that's what they chose to do. Well, they didn't come in. I mean, they got you as your... I know, but they still got us for what? Because we went to a building. You were on federal property, and they were, they wanted right, you into off. Right, into a, yeah, into a building, exactly. Well, we weren't on federal property, and, and oh, I, right. I dispute you that. Right, that, absolutely. Right. Um, but uh, they but said, I mean, <coughs> you're accused of impeding the federal workers at the refuge and doing their responsibility. That's what, they, that's what they've accused us of. Right. Yeah. So when you're, can you take us to that moment you're in the car, and... how you first notice what you notice? There's, there's so much that that's, yeah, there's so much that hasn't been disclosed yet by by the federal government that I'm not going to go into that. Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, were you surprised? I mean, what, was, what did you notice first? Yeah, we were surprised because we were going peacefully to a community meeting with three or four hundred people that invited us to come to give our presentation. We were legally moving about the country the way that, peacefully, the, the way that people should be able to do. And 
And so, yes, we were surprised. And we were not ashamed and never have been ashamed of what we did. Uh, we're very, very pleased with our actions and, and what we, what we uh, were doing. And we were gaining a tremendous amount of momentum. And that is why they had to shut it down. They did not want us to be able to continue our message and communicate that what they're doing is wrong. That what they're doing is breaking the law. And that they are usurping authority, meaning, meaning the people have never given them authority to, to act the way they're acting. Yet they've 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 usurped it. You assumed it. So, were you um, were you surprised when Finnegan drove off? Well, you got, I wasn't in that vehicle. Right. He was up right. again for me. Um, the only thing I would say, and I'm not going into it much further, but because the government shot at them, they they were probably afraid. And shot at that's them. That's all I'm going to say. Early on. Yeah. That's what you. Okay. When when they were complying. You mean stopped? Yeah, you know, when they were stopped and complying, the government shot at them. With, with um, like, bullets or... Do yeah, you know? with the gun. Okay. Yeah. At the car, at this white truck. At, that's correct. So uh, Was that before after um, Payne got out of the truck? That was before he got out. Okay. So, anyway, that's all I'm going to say. But you weren't able that. to see that because you, <laughs> you had already surrendered? At yeah, that I point? mean, they were, above, they were in front of us and I was behind, so... Okay. As I'm sure you know. So. Okay. Now, the reason I pl I played that that clip was to to get a little pers to get from the side of Ammon Bundy, who was who was who was there in the vehicle. Now, the irony of this whole situation is. You know, they were on their way to these meetings. They were on their way. The sheriffs knew it. Obviously, they shared that information with the FBI and the state troopers. But it's it was all about it was all about bravado, to, for lack of a better way of putting it. You know, like Mike's like Mike like we were, like you were saying. You know, this it was ego. It was basically an, uh, uh, showing a lot of bravado, a lot of ego. They were in charge. They were they were in, in charge of, of the situation. Well, you know what? I'd like to know who gave the order to put that roadblock up, first of all. Second of all, who gave the order to fire? From, you know, as far as the FBI side of it, who gave the order to the to the to the to the sniper up in the tree to to open fire like that? If he didn't receive any order to fire, he was acting on his own. There's a lot of unanswered questions that that need to be answered, and hopefully, this court case will bring that out. You know, there's rogue agents out there that want that, that, that to trigger happy or they want to make a name for themselves. You know, put another notch on their barrel or the butt of their gun. Uh, I mean, these people, I'm telling you, they, they give you, they some of these people, you'd be surprised that they, they uh, people that they hire. I don't think they vet them very goddamn well, okay? So who knows? I mean, it's hopefully, like you said, it'll come out in the trial. And everything. <laughs> but it's just too many unanswered questions. One question leads to another fucking question. Crazy. Sad but true. Sad, Sad but true. true. Yeah. And I'm glad that's what. Well, you said several. I think Mike said or somebody that they was going to take their guns away from the BML. You fuckers don't need their own private police department, police force. Yeah, the Bureau of Good Land stuff. Management or BLM. They, yeah, they should not have been armed in in the Bundy Ranch situation at all. No. Who in the fuck? put weapons in their hands. They're not federal law enforcement. No. They're Bureau of Land Management. They manage lands. I mean I mean geez. Okay, does that does that give them the authority to carry you know to, to carry to carry armed weapon to carry arms? Not in the in the way that they was carrying them because it actually it was like police. Okay, they're not police. 
they're Bureau of Land Management, just like park rangers, for example. I don't know if they're commissioned police officers, but they're authorized to carry a gun to protect them, not only them fully, but there's a lot of wild animals out there in them parks, okay? And I wouldn't want to be out there uh, like a park ranger or something without a gun, you know, going in there and up in them hiking trails and looking for lost people and all that shit. I fucking goddamn bears might eat your ass out there, okay? Uh, you know. George, George, go to the uh, the Facebook chat. I just sent an unbelievable story that'll about Indian Point about the nuclear plant. You're gonna enjoy this, Gunslinger. I know you're gonna think it's hilarious. Um, All righty, let me see here. You gotta be kidding me! I this comes out of the New York story. Post. Coworker uh, puts uh, his oh brother, folks, get a load of this. Uh, Coworker geez. puts his penis in my lunch sandwich. Lawsuit. Good God. Okay. Uh, do I really want to read this? Why not? At the, at the nuclear plant. <laughs> and this is at a nuclear pe- plant not far from my hometown. Oh, my God. Am I glad I don't work there as a security guard anymore? How about That's a little sense. sausage with that sandwich? Oh, shit. That's how it starts out the article. <laughs> Trade, I gotta start laughing. Just not fair. <laughs> Let me get my composure here. <laughs> Give me a second. Unbelievable. How about a little sausage with that sandwich? Yeah. Lunchtime at the Indian Point nuclear power plant got saucy when one longtime employee put his penis in a colleague's lunch, according to the court papers. Security officer Vito Messina has spent decades sexually harassing co-workers at the facility 36 miles north of Manhattan, according to three lawsuits accusing him of fondling, grabbing, and propositioning fellow employees. Messina's alleged abuse spans generations. A shop steward at the plant claimed Messina assaulted him while as well as his father, who worked at the plant in the 1990s. I'm going to touch you as much as I want, Messina told James Tepperween, according to a 2007 federal lawsuit. Messina allegedly dug his fingernails into Tepperween's rear end. Later, he repeatedly propositioned the fellow security officer, asking, do you think you would ever have sex with a man? Court papers claim. Managers repeatedly deemed complaints against Messina unfounded, according to separate lawsuits filed by Richard Gustin and Ted, Gro- Ted Gordon. Lunchtime was apparently a favorite for no. Messina's proclivities. Settle. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm trying not to laugh at the article. I'm sorry. This is so fucking sick. That's when he reportedly grabbed a female employee's lunch, uh, a female employee's sandwich, and placed his penis inside of it before returning the sandwich to the table during lunchtime, according to two of the legal claims. Messina retired in March before he could be terminated for inappropriate behavior said an Indian Point spokesman, who noted the company had no complaints about Messina between 2005 and 2016. If I were a supervisor and I started receiving complaints about this guy doing shit like this, that motherfucker would have been fired on the spot. I wouldn't have hesitated five seconds. Now, I worked for an outside security guard company at the time, uh, Professional Security Bureau. And at the time, I was working in the Energy Education Center. I worked there in the 90s, just before I ended up on, you know, I think it was around 94, 95, something like that. 
And I never heard of any any fucking things like this going on. Of course, why would I? I worked in the Energy Ed Center. But still, you would think that you'd hear some rumblings about a guy, about a security guard doing stupid shit like this. Wow. Hey, it takes all kinds. Oh, sick fuck. Yeah, he retired, so now he's got his retirement, but he's got lawsuits coming at him from all angles. Personally, I hope the motherfucker gets what he deserves. I hope he gets what he deserves. I really do, because he's one sick fuck. I mean, yes, to turn around and ask, a, and, and, and ask another security officer, do you think you would ever have sex with a man? On the job, he's asking this stupid shit. Fucker would have been fired under my watch. I guarantee it. He'd have been gone. I'm surprised people didn't beat the fuck out of him. Yeah, no kidding. But they basically let it slide. You know, the, these these uh, supervisors just... Nothing to see here. Please disperse. Nothing to see here. Kind of attitude. That's sick. Gunslinger, any thoughts on this? Well, when he gave it back to the table, he could have had some special sauce on it. I oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Well, yeah. You want mayo with that? Or plain? <laughs> Damn. Yeah, this, this treat, he treated like that, a, that, girl, a that woman's sandwich so like, a, like, a, like a McDonald's... Uh, 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 what are they? Uh, what uh, Big Mac, two all beef <laughs> patty, special sauce, special sauce, emphasis on special sauce, and all that shit. Oh my god! Huh. And this person works at a nuclear power plant. Mm. Nice, nice. Well, Messina <laughs> nice. did work at the nuclear power plant. He retired before they could before they could fire him. <laughs> He saw the writing on the wall. He knew he was going to that eventually he'd get fired, so he retired. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's a sick bastard. <laughs> sick <laughs> fucking bastard. Yeah. Oh. Man, my legs are killing me from tonight. Fuck. Yeah, and, and by the way, I, I started looking at some of those pictures you posted in the uh, in 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 the in the private chat there on Facebook. Yeah. This was at the um, I take it at the uh, Greek festival. All right, a lot of people, huh? And they had a Ben and Jerry's uh, yeah. stand. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, they had a Ben and Jerry's kiosk, whatever you want to call it. A lot of food, man. They had food in, inside. You could go in. Outside, they had another tent with two serving lines, and you could have your choice of uh, chicken oregano, roast lamb, uh, shish kebab, uh, uh, gyro plates, gyro sandwich. Uh, there was a shitload of stuff, and a lot of food, and it was it was good. A lot of people. And this was the 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 location where you were invited to uh, join the band. Well, yeah, I know the guys in the band. And um, they kept saying, Mike, come on up and play. Come on up. And I was like, guys, I haven't played out in years. Don't, I haven't. And I don't know that keyboard. They said, and the guy that owns the keyboard is the clarinetist. He just has a keyboard for additional sounds. When he, you know, he doesn't really, he's not a keyboard player. So he was mostly playing the clarinet. And uh, I said, yeah, come on up and play. And, and he doesn't even know like how to set that thing up completely. So I said, just give me a piano sound and some strings with it. And, uh, 
and I just played along, and then I did a, I did a solo, and uh, that's all right. It yeah, was I'm looking fun. at the picture of you at the keyboard right now. It, yeah. yeah, it was fun for memories. Yeah, it was. You, know, well, you look like you were having fun, so. Yeah, I did. A lot of people, man. It was a lot of, you know, when you don't see somebody, some of these guys for 35 years, 40 years, and it really makes you feel old. I mean, there's one picture with. Greg, this this kid Greg, and there's a picture of me. There's a picture of me. Um, what the fuck is it? There's a picture of you at a table with a bunch of people, and yeah. then there's a a picture of you standing between between two guys. No, there's a right here. Hold on. Okay. Uh, it's not gonna have it. It's on my Facebook page. It's not gonna have it. The, on my Facebook page is a picture of me when I was a little kid playing key, keyboards at a, at a gig, and there's a guy in the background who was the singer, and he owned a restaurant in, in Worcester. And that guy, I used to play gigs with that guy, you know, and, and that band we used to play a lot of weddings and a lot of stuff. And um, that guy died on stage. He was singing. He was in the middle of a song, and he had a massive heart attack, and he dropped dead right on stage. And um, his son was there tonight, and I knew the whole family. And shit, this happened. Man, I holy shit, 1972. And um, and the son came up to me and said, "Mike, this is my my daughter." And I said, "So nice to meet you. She just graduated school. She's a nurse." Now she just got licensed, passed her tests and everything. And and he said, tell her what a grandfather was like. And I said, look how fucking old I am now. I'm telling this girl what her grandfather was like. I don't like that. This is not fucking good. Holy shit. Talk about making you feel old. Well, your grandfather and I, we were at the <laughs> Alamo. <laughs> There we were with our backs up to the wall, and the Mexicans came, and... Uh, well, Jesus Christ, dude. The fuck? What was oh, that? What was that? Something McBrag from Tennessee Tuxedo. Remember him? Commander McBrag from Tennessee... Yeah, that's what I feel like. Uh, yeah. But it was... Uh, there we were. Oh, shit. But... Hi, you know, the, Did I tell you about the time? Yeah, oh, God. Yeah, now you remember? You remember yeah. the guy I'm thinking about? Yeah. Uh, trust me, I grew up watching those cartoons, okay? So. Yeah, man. Commander McBrag. And believe it or not, there's a VaughnLive.tv uh, uh, account that shows <coughs> all those old cartoons, including and not limited to uh, Underdog and Tennessee Tuxedo and all of them. It's like, oh, but Lord. But these guys, I mean, they're all, all, all these, we, we, we joked about it. We said, you know, look at us now. And we, we all grew up, and and one of the guys, he owns two restaurants, and he said, yeah, I'm like, he said, but you know what? He said, the funny thing is, we all survived. We made it. And some people don't. I mean, we partied. We'd had our times, we, but, but we outgrew the shit. And and uh, and it was a, a good bunch of guys, and everybody was connected it was a community. I don't know how to explain it. It was because uh, it was a, it was the Greek community. So, you know, the Greek church was a hub. Everybody knew everybody. Most of the parents knew, you know, who your parents were. And it was a tight community. It was like a big fucking family. And there were different groups within the... I mean, there were some guys that were heavy into smoke and dope. It's like the Cheech and Chong fucking lobby. And uh, we started laughing about four of them. And they were t I said, you know, whatever happened to Angelo and this and that. And we were talking about the time when, I don't know if I ever told you this. They had a, no, Max, don't you fucking dare. I'm out on the porch right now. He just looked under a chair at something and he's growling. Jeez, that's a stunk, you fucking leave it alone, you shithead. I'll leave you outside. Hang on. I gotta look over this bench and make sure there's nothing looking back at me. Yeah, all right. Unless he's up next. You stay here. 
Well, I'm just, well, anyways, anyways, they were going down to Cape Cod with a van, and one of them had bought a boat, a motorboat, and these guys are stoned and drunk off their fucking ass, and they're driving down the highway, and then all of a sudden the traffic got bumper to bumper because you know going out of the Cape it starts to slow down. Well, when they slowed down, the trailer with the boat fucking disconnected, and it passed them on the right hand side, and everybody in the van went, "Hey, man." Isn't that our boat, dude? And the thing fucking passed them, rolling past them. It just skidding past them. And then went back into the, the breakdown lane and flipped over and went off the road. And went, holy shit, man, the boat. And they pulled over and they had to try to, they rescued it. They were able to get it back on the trailer and push the thing back up. It's like Cheech and Chong. Mm. But you know what? But you know what? It, I mean, funny as hell, but it was harmless fun back then. It wasn't like today with the gang members and the shootings and the. We didn't have any of that to deal with. Everybody was, it was, a, I don't know how to describe it. But it was fun seeing everybody and reminiscing. Uh, well, so. I got a, a story here that, uh, <clears throat> it's a rather short read, only a few paragraphs. <clears throat> Apparently, 230 pounds I of marijuana were seized. The plants in plain view on the porch. Is there a reason that you're buffering in the chat room? Not to interrupt, but mine says buffering. What's buffering? Shouldn't be. Well, I'm not. I don't have the feed up, but it says buffering. There's no time. There's no nothing. It's not doing it at my buffering. end. Hmm. Try refreshing the the page. Refreshing. That's all I can say. You know, try refreshing the page. I mean, as long as it doesn't affect your ability to chat in the chat room, you, you should be all right. Oh no, it's fine. It looks like it's fine. I just, I was just it's usually just seeing how how long it's been on, but it says buffering. It's whatever. Yeah. Well, get this, guys. This is out of DeKalb County, Georgia. Maybe Two it had a headache. All right, sorry. You said buffering. I just thought I'd throw it out there. You, you don't know. All right. DeKalb yeah, County. No, buffering and buffering. Two different types of things there, sir. All right, all right. All right. Well, you never know. All right. All right. DeKalb, they had marijuana on their porch? Yeah. Two men have been arrested after police seized 230 pounds of marijuana after a call mentioned the plants were in plain view on an apartment front porch, according to the DeKalb County Police Department. Authorities responded to the call at 2952 North DeKalb Drive and after obtaining a search warrant, found 230 pounds of marijuana in addition to smaller amounts of cocaine, ecstasy, catamine, and money, according to police. Magwai, Wang, Magwai Wang, 52, and Zhenyi Lin, 35, were arrested and charged in relation to the case, according to police. Wang was charged with violation of the Georgia Controlled Substances Act, trafficking marijuana, possession of cocaine with intent to distribute, possession of MDMA with intent to distribute, and possession of catamine with intent to distribute, according to police. Len was charged with drug possession and possession of marijuana, less than one ounce, according to police. Ouch. I got catamine solution. I used to use it for old poison ivy all the fucking time. I didn't know no, it was illegal. That's calamine lotion, not oh, catamine. Oh, okay. All right, never mind. Can you it's spelled the same way, C-A-L-A-M-I-D. No, 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 catamine? No, catamine is, uh, is spelled K-E-T-A-M-I-N-E. Okay. Does it have anything to do with dog of mine? With who? Dog of mine. Oh, that dog of yours? Oh, okay. <laughs> well, if, you got, if you got a cat yeah. at home, that's a cat of mine. Yeah, it's cat. Well, if you got a dog, then yeah. it's a dog of mine. I mean, there's got to be a, a fucking connection between the two. No, of no, them. no, 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 no. One, 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 one is a drug. The other is not. Totally do, you, that has you nothing to do with it. Of, you got a bowl of fish, it's and, fish and, and you're thinking we might, cat of mine. We, we might be onto something here. We might be onto something here. We could analyze the news from this angle, all of us, and, and rip it apart and fucking drive the media fucking insane. Holy shit, people just listen to see us and make fun of the whole fucking thing. 
Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there, is, there are moments of fun involved. And, of course, if the mainstream media got a hold of this the way we're talking about it now, they'd be sitting there going... Did, did, they, did they just say catamine uh, in relation to dogamine? Oh, shit. But they had this... They must, that must have been a big fucking... Or a lot of plants. And it's kind of obvious, isn't it? I mean, did they really think they're going to fool anybody or nobody's going to notice? Jeez, it's funny. Those things haven't bloomed yet. <coughs> but they keep getting bigger. I mean, what do you think? They look like weeds. Duh. And I think that stuff smells, doesn't it, when it grows? Because I was reading reports, they say that when they come in on fields of them, like in the woods, they can actually smell it. I don't know. Oh. I, I, personally, I, I don't, I, I can't, I don't, I have no idea. And I'm not even going to venture a guess, Mike. No. no, I think, you know, when the when the police do these raids, you know, sometimes they've, they're growing marijuana in acres of, like, unused, uh, like, federal forest land or something. And they said they're walking through the woods and all of a sudden you can smell that shit when you've got fields of it. So, I mean, even that much growing on a, in front of a house. You... Well, I'll tell you what, uh -huh. um, I, I, I've got a picture from the story that, that shows the 230 pounds of marijuana. Wow. Uh, I just put that in the <laughs> Facebook chat. And now I'm going to put it in the Mixler chat room for the rest of the folks that are in the Mixler chat room. And you look at this at, at this table, I mean, it's literally covered, three quarters of it's covered with the marijuana. And then, like, toward the front and almost center is the rest of the stuff. All packaged for sale. Max, leave Max, leave it alone. It'll grow. Uh, it'll grow. Billy, what what story are you referring to? Because uh, b b b remember, I was, remember I was um. Can you hear Billy. Me? Hey, it's great. hey, what's up, Mike? How was your day? Good. Good. Um, remember I was telling you, Mike. I got Mike all confused about the four teenagers that just. Up and disappeared. Nobody knew where the fuck they were at. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it's on Fox. I just went to foxnews.com to see if anything's up. What's up? And there it was. Well, this you story, know? actually the story, Billy, has been been on Fox News for the last couple of days. They just found the bodies a couple of days ago. Oh, yeah. No, so they probably put, in, yeah, probably put an update out. Yeah, but it's been they've been talking about it on their website oh, for a couple of God. days or so, at least. Right, that they were missing. I'm yeah. saying this is like <coughs> what the deal is. I guess they usually don't put stuff up until it has like the whole like why they why they did what they did. I didn't read it, but I was surprised. I was like, oh, there's that story that I got in my email from you know Channel Six News in Philadelphia. Did they ever find out why he killed them? I don't know, Mike. I mean, it might be in there when, in Fox's report. Um, Let me see. People won't put it when they go to this cable station. Yeah. Well, the reason why. I've got the story open, so... Um, I don't know. I'm hungry, man. Damn. I eat all day. Well, I've got the story open, so let's see here. <clears throat> Two cousins accused in the grisly murders of four young men in Pennsylvania have a history of small-time criminal behavior. The young men, Cosmo DiNardo and Sean Kratz, started with more minor infractions, break-ins, jewelry heists, traffic infractions, but on Friday, they were charged in the, in, murderous, in the murderous spree that ended with police unearthing the bodies of four young men from two pits buried deep on a sprawling family-owned farm. Police found the missing men after a difficult five-day search in sweltering heat and pelting rain. But it's still not clear why the 20-year-old suspect's crimes escalated from petty offenses. For Donardo, 
whose lawyer said he confessed to all four killings in exchange for being spared the death penalty, brushes with the law began in his early teenage years. He was about 14 when the Ben Salem Police Department first had contact with him. Over the next six years, he had more than 30 run-ins with, with, with its officers, Department Director Frederick Horan said. Although court filings reflect only the minor infractions and traffic stops that came after age 18. DiNardo enrolled at, at, Acad at Arcadia University in Glenside in the fall of 2015 with hopes of studying biology and had an eye on international travel, according to a blog post announcing the incoming class. I'm going to go overseas, hopefully to Italy and the rest of Europe, he's, he is quoted as saying. However, his time at the school was short, after making comments that unnerved several people on campus. Public safety officials contacted the local police department. The university sent a letter to DiNardo's parents saying their son could face trespassing charges if he returned to the school. A, a person aware of the contents of the letter said, speaking to the Associated Press on condition of anonymity because they were not authorized to publicly discuss it. A year and a day before he admitted to killing the, the missing men, lighting three of them on fire and using a backhoe to load the charred bodies into an oil tank that he buried more than 12 feet deep on his parents' farm, a family member had DiNardo involuntarily committed to a mental institution, Haran said. Details of his institutionalization remain unclear, but he was barred by law from owning a firearm afterward. Nonetheless, when Ben Salem police responded to a report of gunfire in February, an officer found DiNardo in his truck with a 20-gauge shotgun and extra ammunition. According, he acknowledged his history of mental illness, Haran said. A year later, here we are, Haran said Friday. The system is broken. Despite the mental health commitment and frequent infractions with police, DiNardo still managed to sell guns and marijuana in the area. According to a source familiar with DiNardo's confession, who spoke to the AP on condition of anonymity. A police affidavit confirmed the source's story. DiNardo lured each of the victims to his family's 90-acre Solbury Township farm under the guise of marijuana deals. His first victim was set to buy $8,000 worth of marijuana but arrived with only $800, DiNardo told police, so he brought the 19-year-old Loyola University student to a remote part of the farm and shot him with a 22 caliber rifle. He buried Jimmy Taro Patrick in a hole he dug with a backhoe. Yellow ribbons now line the Newtown Street where Patrick lived with his grandparents. DiNardo then enlisted his cousin to help him rob 19 year old Dean Finicharo, I think that's how it's pronounced. 22 years old, 22 year old Mark Sturgis, and 21 year old Tom Mio, according to the police affidavit. The three victims were shot, placed, in a, w placed with a backhoe into an oil tank that had been converted into a cooker that DiNardo called a pig roaster and then lit, and then lit on fire, according to the affidavit. He buried the drum deep under the ground on his family's farm. Court records show Kratz was previously arrested on two separate burglary charges in Philadelphia for thefts in June and December of last year where he reportedly stole $1,000 in tools and $450 worth of jewelry. A week before the second theft arrest, Kratz was picked up for shoplifting $200 worth of clothing at a Macy's near Philadelphia. Police say Kratz had been using pliers to cut off security tags 
He pleaded guilty in June to retail theft after more serious charges were withdrawn. With the Philadelphia cases still pending in January, court records show Kratz skipped bail and went to Illinois. That prompted a judge to issue a bench warrant for his arrest. Hey, Tony? Yeah. Tony, you got something blowing in the We're background? We're getting noise from you again. Oh, uh, shit. All right. Uh, now I lost, where, I, where was I here? Uh, that prompted a judge to issue a bench warrant for his arrest. Out on bail again, a prosecutor said Friday, Kratz became a killer. Kratz... <laughs> Tony, your, your just message just received is... a message. You got your message. <laughs> I was going to say something. <laughs> when I figured, no, I better keep my mouth shut. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, folks. What's that? We heard the of your phone's vibration. Aha! You can you can hear the phone, my phone. Buzzing? Your, when yep. your phone, when yep. you you must have gotten the message because your phone's vibration was picked up on the microphone. Yeah, man. Yeah, if it was laying on a table, it was laying here. on a table. We would. Yeah. What, no, I, uh, what, I gotta what figure you this out. Back to your asshole, so you know you get a little hummer there when it goes yeah, off. A fucking sound. I gotta, I gotta figure this phone out. Oh, brother! <laughs> I'm not saying a word to that one, dude. No way. <laughs> I'm gonna behave myself on the grounds that it may get me in trouble. Okay, where was I? Oh, yes. Kratz, who said he works at a tilling company, did not have a lawyer with him at his arraignment. Clad in a blue jumpsuit and flanked by detectives, he told the judge that he has trouble walking because he been shot three times months ago. Kratz's mother, Vanessa, declined to comment. At a press conference Friday, announcing that police had recovered all four previously missing bodies, a reporter asked Bucks County District Attorney Matthew Weintraub why DiNardo felt the need to kill the young men. I'm not really sure we, we could ever answer that question, he said. Uh, let me see. How can I put this? Because he was sick in the fucking head? He was a sociopath. No emotion. No remorse. No happy, no sad. Just a sociopath. Yeah, it's just, all, all, dry, uh, all motive driven. There's no emotion. That's yeah, a sociopath. Yeah, but Billy, you know something? Even a sociopath on some... Some base level, I would think. Now I may be wrong, but I would think. You know, would 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 either before committing the act or while committing the act might think, well, this might be wrong to do, and just do it anyway. I don't think they know right from wrong. I mean, I'm not a psychologist. You'd have to ask a psychologist. But just by all these people that have, that have done these things like that, obviously something snaps. They are suffering from mental illness, and they might have at one time known it was wrong to do these things, to kill like that. But because of a mental illness or injury, head injury, I don't know, they no longer they think it's okay. Okay, They're crazy. They're not just like you said, George. They're, they're it, Psychopaths are crazy. They're insane yeah, in the well, membrane. Yeah, you know? and, 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 and yeah, because like Billy said, you know, he's just, you know, the guy sounds like a sociopath. You know, basically, yeah. you know, no emotions whatsoever. No emotions e either way. I mean, he was. All, I guess the best way for me to describe a, a sociopath would be a Vulcan from Star Trek. 
emotionless. Yeah, no, no, you know, live long and prosper, you know. Uh, but uh, like, I'm sure he has a little bit of serial killer in his DNA. Yeah. All kinds yeah. of with that guy. Yeah, I think that all these mass shootings and all this shit they've had, these people have shown no emotion. They just pull, you know, pull a gun out and start shooting. Like, hey, no big deal, right? Man, I couldn't do that. Shit. Oh, man. That's not in the, not, a, not, a, not a sane, a, a, you know, under a sane condition. Yeah. Man, they've had, they've had wacko, wacko fucking mass murderers for centuries they've been around. Yeah. I was just reading one about a guy called H. H. Holmes. I never heard about this guy before. In Chicago? Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. I was reading about that guy. What a fucking lunatic. That guy was a scary motherfucker. Did you what's all that what's all that noise in the background? It's Sounds like a fan. Yeah. Sounds like that Tony? Tony from you again, Tony. No, no fucking way. Tony's moving stuff around. He's, he's Tony. You moving stuff around, and you got a fan in the background. Tell me if you hear it now. Oh, I don't hear anything now, but it sounded like you were moving furniture or something around on the table and moving something. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm you're sitting on my bed. Oh. Stop can, sound, man. Well, we certainly hope it ain't breaking. He ain't breaking. Well, we we can certainly say with some certainty that it's possible he's not breaking wind. No, that's true. But this guy George built a. If you look up the history of this guy, it's not that long of a history. H. H. Holmes, he built a house like a, a house of torture, mm. and he he rent he rented out his house for the World Fair or something. Boyd, wasn't it the World's Fair? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah, and people would come in and rent that room for him, and not all of them left. And he had shoots to get the bodies to the basement, and he had uh, this guy was a fucking he was a wacko. Sounds like it. I mean, yeah. Tony, Tony, your 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 fan is really my fan is off. Well, what the heck you got going noise. on in the background is making all that racket. You know what? This is fucking new phone, man. This didn't happen with my Probably last Probably has one. A sense, uh, an overly sensitive microphone <laughs> on it. Yeah, it could be. You might, try, microphone. you might try turning Skype microphone down, I guess. Can you do that on the phone? I don't know. Mm, I don't know. Yeah, I turned, I turned, it's not as I easy on a phone to do that as you might think, uh, Gunslinger. I've tried, and it ain't easy. Turn the, turn the fan off and put the AC on, but you guys never heard the AC before. Hmm. What, is that louder? I would think that would be quieter. I always had the AC on when you're talking to you guys. You guys never said anything about yeah, it. Yeah, no, we never heard it then. All right. I think, okay. I think this phone is fucking different. picks up. Everything. It's sensitive, very sensitive. Yeah. That, well, there's going to be an adjustment. Th th that's one reason why I'm glad I got the Motorola Droid Max 2. Uh, as far as my upgrade, you know, with the phone service, because, uh, you know, this thing, it's got a, it's, it, the mic works great on it, but it doesn't pick up every little tiny background noise in the, in the world now somebody was now, now when i went to uh, verizon to originally do my upgrade they were actually offering me this uh the uh the one of the lgs and i said no thank you i want to stick to the motorola brand i want to stick with what i know and they said okay well the, and i said well how about the more how about the droid max 2 and they said yeah that and it turned out to be a better phone than the first one I had. But, you know, that's because I, I, I had the, origi the original Droid Max. So, I knew the phone. But uh, getting back to this, uh, you know, getting back to this Chicago guy, and then I want to, you know, 
I, I never heard about it, Mike. I really didn't. And I'm, that's really, you know. And he's, yeah, I mean, we hear about, what's his name, Gacy and all these other mass murderers. And, but, man, it's, there's a lot of them through history. I mean, uh, the yeah. Ripper wasn't the only one mass murderer. There, there's a shitload of them. Oh, well, here's something. Look at this about, remember the uh, the silencer bill where they're trying to pass it to to limit, I mean, to change the regulation on the silencers, and the liberals are freaking out over that. Remember that thing about that bill? Mm -hmm. Well, they're rolling it into a bigger bill to make sure they get it through. I just said the thing. Yeah, I, so I, I, I guess got it. Yeah, so I guess we're... Our side is starting to play the liberals' game of taking something we want and rolling it into a bigger bill, making it harder for them to say no. Wow. Yeah, because um, I have it here, but i got to increase the size of the page in order to be able to read it. And i got to move that over. Thank you. Ron Reckless popped up, showed up there for a minute. I don't know if yeah, I was trying to bring him on, but he because he kept popping up as uh, being on Skype, but he's not answering. Oh well. According to to this National League update, National Legal update. Sorry, yeah. National League. Oh boy, <laughs> the baseball people are going to be mad at me for that one. Hearing Protection Act rolling into bigger bill. The Hearing Protection Act has been attached to the Share Act, a sportsman omnibus, a sportsman's omnibus. Yeah, I can talk. Omnibus bill with a lot of pro-gun features. <clears throat> Among those features, the Share Act, sportsman's. Heritage and Recreational en Enhancement Act would do the following. Moves silencers slash suppressors from Title II to Title I status. Um, when I'm done reading this, Mike, maybe you can clue me in as to what that is. Enhances the Firearms, Owner, Firearms Owners Protection Act language to include travel by means other than vehicles creates remedies against states that violate the safe travel provisions, including a, a cause of action and attorney's fees. <clears throat> Excuse me. Eliminates the sporting purposes language from the Gun Control Act of 1968 and the law on armor-piercing ammunition. Creates a blanket exemption for shotguns to prevent arbitrary classification, <laughs> reclassification, sorry, as destructive devices. Now, the Hearing Protection Act has been one of the most important bills for sportsmen and women of this Congress, which is why it's common sense for it to be included in this year's sportsmen's legislation pa legislative package. Representative Jeff Duncan, Republican from South Carolina, Duncan, the bill's sponsor, told Politico, by changing the outdated regulation of suppressors to an instant background check, just like the requirements to purchase a typical firearm, I hope the sportsmen and women in the United States will have greater access to noise reduction technology as they carry the hunting and recreational shooting tradition to future generations. If this bill passes, said Texas and U.S. Law Shield Independent Program Attorney Michelle Byington, it will make suppressors Title I items like firearms, that is, not National Firearms Act devices, which means they will become more common and more widely transported. However, at least 10 states will likely ban suppressors even if this becomes law. About the same number of states have some kind of restriction on ammunition feeding devices, also known as magazines. FOPA, safe travel, won't do us much good if gun owners can still be arrested for magazines and accessories. 
And it says here, attaching the HPA to a bill that should make it easier to pass it to pass and suggest that congressional Republicans may have become serious about actually passing this, she said. <coughs> Excuse me. Passing this bill would be a big win. Texas and U.S. Law Shield staff. Well, let me ask you this. Is is it true that I've never had a silencer? Okay, I've never had a weapon that... that I've never had a weapon that ever needed anything. So. That needed, yeah, I've always heard, and it makes sense. Mike, you probably know because you've been the machine gun and all that stuff. You, a silencer won't silence a, a revolver. It'll only work on a semi, semi-automatic, right? It'll, 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 cut, it'll cut some of the sound down, but the space between the cylinder and the barrel... There's a, that's why they tell you, or the, yeah, they tell you yeah. never put your hand over that area, yeah, yeah. because gases come out and sound comes out yeah. from that area too. So, uh, semi-automatic is probably one of the safest bets that uh, for having a silencer for being able to control the sound out of it mm-hmm. and get you know. But even then, all of it doesn't it doesn't make it totally quiet. You're still going to hear something. I thought you, know? you just hear a thump thump thump. Well, it depends thump. on the caliber. Mm-hmm. Some of them, some of those thumps are louder than others. If it's a twenty-two, which is real strong, then it's going to be really subdued. Hmm. You know. Well, Mike, remember I said uh, I wanted to get, uh, I wanted you to help clear something up uh, in, when I was reading this. Uh, yeah. In regards to uh, the moving of silencers and/or suppressors from a Title II to a Title One status, I mean, under under current regulations, Title II. And maybe you can explain the difference between between Title II and Title I status. I, I'm Ti- not Title being a gun owner. I don't know. So. Title I would be considered like something like a rifle, where you have to be licensed or whatever, and you have to go through the next background check to buy it, and it's common stuff, no big deal. Title II puts you into NFA weapons, National Firearms Act, which covers everything from destructive devices to fully automatic and silencers. And all the good fun stuff that we're not allowed to own, uh, unless you have a special license from the government and you pay a two hundred dollar transfer tax, you know, and or if you modify your weapon and make it a short barreled rifle, and you pay the transfer tax on that, it's also considered an NFA weapon. Um, so it 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 takes it off the NFA list, the National Firearms Act, and makes it so that anybody can own them. You know, so f- legally, under federal law, you're going to be allowed to have it. But California and New York are two states that I know guaranteed, because they're paranoid liberals, that they'll say, no, I don't want I don't want silencers out there. Bad guys use those for, you know, what do you think, they're fucking free? The silencers are expensive, man. They're not $10. You know, and you got to know what you're doing with them. you got to clean them. You gotta, even the cheap ones... I mean, the early ones were nothing but, I mean, they had a silencer for the Sten gun that was a tube, and it had round discs of leather with a little hole in the middle of each one. And the discs, the leather discs would make chambers in between each other, like a baffle. So Hmm. as the bullet went through the hole in the middle of the leather, you know, then the sound would keep getting less and less and less and less like a muffler. You know, till it came out the the end of the barrel, and, and you know, there's, I mean, some people say there's a loss of velocity. You lose a little bit of velocity at close range. Eh, you're not going to notice any fucking real difference. Um, but you know, now they become high tech. The days of the leather disc uh, stuff; those days are long gone, and those discs would wear out. You know what I mean? The hole gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, they're not going to work. It's not going to work like it was when it was brand new. But now, these silencers they got today are high-tech. You can take them apart, you can clean them, put them back together, and they're pretty impressive. Oh. You know, and I'd, I'd love to have one. That would be great to go to the range and not have to worry about, you, you know, I mean, I get hearing protection up the wazoo anyway, but, you know, well, I'd love to have a silencer. Oh. But then again, <clears throat> some laws would have to be modified, even in New York, because some states on their on their rules actually say that you cannot have a threaded section of the end of your barrel. 
because they don't want you to accept fucking silencers. And also, I forget which it is, what it is, but there's a certain certain thread size, a certain thread. I forget what the fuck it is that is only used by si- only used by silencers. Um, there's a certain uh, thread style or size or something that uh, so that's why like if you go and you try to pick up a die for it or something you're not going to get it at Home Depot it's an oddball size but New York State you cannot have an extension on the end of your barrel that's threaded Uh, then you're considered you're you're getting into illegal shit right there because they don't want you to have the ability to screw anything on the end of that barrel um what else could so, you screw into the end of the barrel but, but a silencer? Well, they also consider, like, you know how they, they're against uh, muzzle brakes? Oh, huh. Flash hiders? Right. They don't want any of that shit on there because they consider that making it a military weapon now. Because I know I got my 12-gauge pump, and it's got a, you, the tip of it unscrews to put yeah. the, the different size chokes on it. For the different size chokes, right. That's a different thing. Shotguns are exempt. Uh, no, nobody's been like a, I don't think they have a silencer for a shotgun. Mm, no, not that know. Uh, no, uh, I doubt that. Unless it's for when you're using slugs, that'd be a big ass fucking can. I'll tell you that. That would be a really big one. But uh, I mean, some of the stuff they had to do that because do you remember the old uh, SKSs and the AKs that came out back? <sighs> 70s 80s and they had a, a muzzle brake that would fit over the end of the barrel and then it would lock itself around the sight you twist it do you remember those mm. it looked like a little can and and you fit it over it and then you would turn it and but they they weren't reliable because they didn't stay in place i remember one time i shot my sks i've got a i've got a paratrooper model sks and uh man i launched I launched the muzzle brake. I pulled the trigger, the round went off, and the muzzle brake went flying with the round down range. Oh, motherfucker, look at that. Son of a bitch. And I had to go get my muzzle brake. I said, okay, that's useless. Because well, it didn't it, it didn't grab strong enough. So a lot of people would love to have that. I mean, I think it would solve the problems for a lot of the gun ranges, too, if they made them available for people. Because, you know, like Blue Mountain, George? Mm-hmm. The neighbors neighbors have complained about the noise nonstop. Now, what would happen if everybody had muzzle muzzle if, if they had silencers? No more complaints. It'd be fine. Yeah. Hey, you want to hear something really fucked up? Remember, we haven't heard anything. Notice how we haven't heard too much about Antifa lately. Yeah. Well. <clears throat> Um, that guy Waters on Fox News Channel? Mm-hmm. Well, apparently, he confronted an Antifa member. And this Antifa member is calling for anti-Trump violence. Um, opening up the, uh, my face, I'm opening up my, oh, yeah, I can talk. Opening up Facebook on the other computer so I can put this clip up. And of course, I gotta wait for it to load here. Thank you. Now, let me get into this. Open Sesame. That's better. A little more. Thank you. Grab the link to the video here. Thank you. Now we'll just open this sucker up. Come on. Open Sesame, please. All right. Well, here is Water from Water's World on Fox News. And the Antifa. Nut. Angry anti-Trump protesters demanding, quote, the Trump-Pence regime must go across the country this weekend. Here in New York, the group started at Trump Tower, although the president isn't even there. The protesters are part of a group called Antifa, short for anti-fascism. 
Recently, in an open letter published on the anarchist website called It's Going Down, an Antifa member calls for Americans to get violent in order to oust President Trump. The author writes, It is time for liberals and progressives to lose their illusions about the anarchist movement and our tactics because, quite frankly, you have no one else willing to fight for you. Kevin, who doesn't want to give his last name, represents the Antifa branch of Boston, claims he wrote that letter. He joins me now via Skype. So, Kevin, why don't you want us to use your last name? What are you afraid of? Uh, you see what happened with CNN? They, uh, they basically doxed that guy that, uh, that made that, that gif. So you're of, afraid uh, if your name is out there, people are going to come to your house? Of course. Okay. Just... Can I, let me ask you something quickly, because you told this to our producer. You said, if violence is what it takes to bring about our goals, so be it. What do you mean by that? Okay, uh, you're kind of taking my words out of context there. Well, what uh, did you we, say? Just a second now, you uh, claim that uh, I'm promoting violence. We only want violence and self-defense from uh, aggression by these racists and xenophobes that uh, come and attack us at our peaceful protests. Who's been attacking you guys? Uh, racists, mostly. They're, they're racist. Clan fascists. members have been attacking you guys? Right-wing Trump supporters. Clan okay. members fall under that category. Okay, so how do you know they're racist if they're Trump supporters? Because Trump himself is racist. He started his campaign on racism. Yeah, because First we're looking at says, some video right now. I don't know if you can see it, but we don't see a lot of hand-to-hand -hand comment. We just see a lot of your crew smashing windows and lighting things on fire. How is that self-defense? No, I, I can't see any video. I just got a blank screen here. Okay, well, you got to take my word for it. Are you familiar with the violent actions that your group has perpetrated? You got to take my word for it. It is in self-defense. Uh, against right-wing aggression. Was it in self-defense when you firebombed a limousine during the inauguration? Yes. Okay, because the owner of the limousine is a Muslim immigrant. Were you aware of that? Well, you know, a lot of violence committed by so-called Antifa members is actually committed by these right-wingers who basically seek to make us look bad. Okay, so the Muslim immigrant who owned the limo that was firebombed was trying to make you look bad how? Uh, I don't think he's the one that firebombed it. It's these right-wing infiltrators. You see it all the time, oh, all okay. over the internet. So that There's wasn't these so-called Antifa groups okay. that have been. What about made when up by an Antifa right member stabbed a police horse in the neck with a knife? Was the horse a racist Trump supporter? Yes. So <laughs> the horse. I didn't know horses is, could vote. <laughs> you see, the horse is a tool of the police, and yeah. the police under the Trump administration have been increasingly intolerant, militarized, racist, and xenophobic. You see it all the time. There have been so many cases of unarmed black men and women, our fellow POCs, that have been attacked, shot, and killed okay. by these racist policemen okay. and police women under the Trump administration. Uh, okay. They kill I think the police are police. actually trying to protect the safety of the citizens that you guys are causing mayhem in front of but that's besides the point why can't you guys peacefully protest like gandhi or martin luther king you see we do peacefully protest uh in the case of martin luther king i not from um, what i see on the video but go ahead when they when they were attacked they certainly defended themselves when martin luther king was shot and assassinated he uh well I'm not, I'm not comparing you to Martin Luther King. I was just saying maybe you should try to adopt some of their tactics. What, what is your goal, your bottom line goal? Our goal, I like to keep it plain and simple, <clears throat> like to say we want to smash the fash. And, so um, violence is that, your goal. I mean all types of fascism, racism. Okay, who's the fascist? Um... Mainly these right wingers who uh, attack us. They are all over the internet these days, and and they've been emboldened by this administration to show their faces oh. in real life okay. and come so, attack us. So you guys are like a self defense group. You go, is that yes. what you're saying? Okay, got it. We uh, are a self defense group. Who did you attacked. vote for in the election? I voted for Hillary Clinton. Okay, I'm sure she's proud to have you as a supporter. Well, I don't know if the Secret Service is watching. Maybe they should. Take a closer look at you, Kevin. I appreciate you, see, I you coming to in 
to Waters well, I World. I wanted to vote for Bernie Sanders, yeah. but the it was the nomination was stolen from him. But I just could not let Trump take the presidency. You understand? Okay. Well, you know what? That's maybe the one thing you and I agree with. I think the primary was rigged against our friend Bernie. Thank you, Kevin. I appreciate it. This kid's a fucking lunatic. A fucking lunatic. The horse was a Trump, a Trump supporter. The Trump, it was a Trump supporter. Uh, okay. That was a Trump supporter. The the horse that got stabbed in the neck by an Antifa person. Oh yeah. Yeah, he said yes, it was. Did you see they, any video or any news of what they had to hold back from the leaders that went to the G20 in Germany? No. Oh, my God. I have never, you know, how they protested these things, right? No. All right. I, you know what I'm talking about? You know, when the leaders meet, everybody shows up and they protest their grievances, right? I never seen anything like this. Lighting fires, throwing shit. And this is just basically, I think, one location. Like one perimeter. It was just one perimeter, and that was it. And it was. I never seen anything like it at the G7, the G20, um, a Republican convention. You know, anything I had to do. That's the worst. I've seen it since in, in my memory. You know, it's it's pretty bad because what they're using to push them back is uh, uh, them big uh, fire hoses. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So they got a bunch of fire hoses, and uh, I've never gotten hit by a fire hose, but I've seen a fire hose knock fucking windows out and doors and shit. So, I don't think they were that strong. You know, they're hitting people. But, yeah, they had to push them back. They lit fires and shit. Break I mean, a lot of them, a lot of these Antifa people were upset that Hillary didn't get elected. Well, no, this is over in Europe. This is in Germany. No, but no, I'm saying, if they don't get what they want, they overreact. And over in Germany, too. They, These guys don't get what they want. They don't get the, the publicity. They feel the only way that they can get publicity to get their message out there is by violence. And uh, and and acting <laughs> fucking weird. I I was talking to somebody about it. Okay, I showed them the video. It's all it's on my wall. Just gotta scroll down and find it. it. Says welcome to your new reality or whatever. But and look look at the whack job that I just put in the chat room. Look at that lady. Um, somebody posted said uh, she's probably upset because Hillary didn't win. Take a look at that thing. That creature. I I gotta open my uh, thing up again. I had to close it. George, I think she's looking for a date. I mean, that one Not might be... Not in my direction there, buddy boy. I Yeah, the, this one was, this is a hot one right there. That's a hot tamale. I mean, I'm you taking one look at that, and you know what I'm thinking? Holy shit. Put that, put that, hog tie that with, 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 with thick fucking chains, and then put it on the back of a truck and drive it to Portland, Oregon or something. I, she'd pull the truck in the other direction. She would pull that truck... Uh, look at the muscles on that animal. Yeah. I'm not even going to give it a second look. Sorry. All right. Gunslinger, you like her? Yeah, I think I'll pass on that one. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, it'd be hard to argue with her. I mean, it looks like she'd get into a fist fight. Holy shit. Well, just recently... <laughs> Just recently. Can you guys see the screen? On Skype? Hmm? Oh, yeah. All right. This is one perimeter. All right. So they don't get to... Because if they... Like, if the cops are just like, go ahead, people. Go ahead. Go meet your leaders. They all be dead now. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to real quick, like, you know, scroll through it as, as best I can here. Look at the fucking fires and shit. Flashbangs. Scrolling through it real quick here. Smoke. I have never seen this at a G20 
A G7, any leaders meeting this bad? Have you guys? Like in the 60s or something? Hold on, let me get over to that. I want to look at this. Um, See the fire? And then there's, there's something up on fire. It looks like an armored vehicle. Where is it? It's got a round thing on top. Where'd you post it, Billy? When did I post it? Where? I see Brady. He did. He shared it on his screen. Oh, yeah. I don't see. I don't see it. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's on my uh, Facebook. Let me uh, turn this off. <clears throat> but I've never seen that. Um, stop sharing. I've never seen it that bad. Like. I've seen demonstrations before at these at these events, like where all the leaders go and meet and talk about, you know, how they're going to, you know, <clears throat> divvy up the world and shit. <laughs> all right. Um, Where'd Tony go? He dropped. He dropped. Oh, I guess we lost Tony. Yeah, I never seen that bad. Um, they, you know, they back in the day they used to show that shit on the news. Yeah. And, you know, the sort of protesters on the news and shit. And I never seen it that bad. It's getting ready. Peasants are getting ready to revolt. Chop some heads off, I guess. Let's see here. Posted it on Facebook and in the chat room. Well, guess what? Jesse Jackson had a few choice words. Hillary won the 2016 election. It was stolen. <laughs> Get a listen to this. If I can actually get it to play without getting banners and all kinds of crap in my face, <coughs> let's try that again. <coughs> and it's going to take forever to play. I can see that. Come on. Play it. Play it. This is not fair. Let me try this again. I, I just love when and I played this earlier today when I when I was when I was, when I was gathering the stuff for tonight. And it played. Okay. <coughs> so far. Hmm. All right, fine. I've got an I've got an idea. I do have a plan. Because I took the liberty just in case. Just in case it didn't take. So give me a moment while I send this file over to the other computer. I downloaded the video just in case I needed to. Oh, <clears throat> uh, there's always a method to my madness. And of course, that's the wrong folder. There we go. Now, let's see here. Make a quick alteration in the 
location. Yeah, Jesse Jackson, I swear the man the man is out of his freaking tree. Absolutely out of his friggin' mind. <clears throat> yeah, this shouldn't take long. Ooh. Alright. Here we go. Now let's open this sucker up. He has a sensitivity to the fact that in this state, Tom, we, uh, if, if the affordable health care bill is killed, 72,000 jobs of number one breadwinners. In this state, another 900,000 are temporary workers working but cannot get benefits. To have a, a head of our party who is sensitive to the plight of working people is the order of this day. Don't forget. When you lose, uh, you tend to amplify woulda, coulda, shoulda. When you win, you cover up your sins. Don't let them in the fool you. We worked last year. We won the election. It was stolen. To Carter, to Ford, to Clinton, to Barack, if any of them had had, from John F. Kennedy to Nixon to Carter, to Ford, to Clinton, to Barack, if any of them had had to face the impact a, of uh, Russian interference in such a bold way that they face the foolishness of the Electoral College and the interference of the FBI. None of them, was, Hillary won in spite of having three million vote lead. So we're not going to let anybody break our spirit. We're going to keep fighting back. The big election is coming up this year. We intend to win. And I'm convinced that the man who has the right moral compass is the head of DNC, Brother Tom Perez. Tom, come forward. Now, he made these comments Thursday in Chicago at the Rainbow Push Coalition Convention. <clears throat> He's batshit crazy. Damn. I agree. Amazing. Fucker <laughs> is nuts. Nuttier than a, nuttier than a damn fruit bar or a nut bar jeez but you know something from his perspective you're nuts I'm nuts you know he's you know, nuts that's just, that, that's just the way it is you know you get people, two people disagree you know one thinks the other's nuts and that's how it works I think Do they think they can create this perfect society? You know? And, um, I don't know. I, I could say we're not there, we're not anywhere near there yet. So, it's a pipe dream. Maybe if they give us all crack, oh, then then they'll have their perfect society. You know. I think I think Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton are on the outs. They're so far outside of the, off the fringe. They're out of the radar. The media is not giving them enough playtime because they're too busy with Trump and everything else that these guys are desperate to become relevant again and they're trying to they'll say whatever they need to do to get their name mentioned to, to start getting into the mainstream again because the public's forgotten about them because they're fucking idiots and then the public knows they're idiots but they don't want to give up that spotlight you know, they want to be asked by the media, what's your opinion on this and about race? And But they've already been exposed. They're race baiters. Those fuckers make money off this thing. It's a game for them. Yeah. So anytime they're, you know, and the public, the public's not stupid. They know that. 
So anything they could say that even is like outrageous, it, it gets their name mentioned. It gets them talked about. And so yeah, but you know uh, it's something, funny. Mike. It, it's strange though because <clears throat> this is the first that I've heard anything out of Jesse Jackson's mouth in a long time. Uh, yeah, a long time. Okay, and haven't heard anything from Al Sharpton. He's too busy losing weight and trying to think of how he's going to pay the federal government. Uh. Well, remember his their their boy is out of the out of the main office now. Okay? Yeah. So that's really that really, you know, knocked the wind out of him yeah. right there. Once as long as his butthead was was in there. Oh, we got a brother in the, in the president of the United States. Yeah, I can say anything I want to. Yeah, you can't fucking touch me. Now what they're fucking doing? They're fucking quiet as a goddamn mouse, ain't they? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Well, they're not that quiet because you just heard uh, Jesse Jackson shoot his mouth off. Well, as quiet <laughs> as as they used to be. They used to be that they was uh, they was, you know. It's talking up a damn storm. Now it's just a damn little piss storm or a piss shower. You know, nothing. Yeah, it's still, still stupid talk. Yeah, obviously, but they're not as act. They're not as active as they as they once was a while back. Oh, and that's the reason because their butt buddy's not in there anymore. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and, and 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 you know something, and, and I and it's and we've said this before on the broadcast, both when it was, when we're on Blog Talk Radio and even here on Mixler and YouTube. You know, the simple fact is, they're race baiters. All of them. Okay. All of them. Sharpton, of them. Jackson, and the former dictator. They're all fucking race baiters. If you didn't agree with Obama's policies, you were racist. If you didn't agree... <clears throat> with anything he said or did. You were racist. Oh, shit. I just swallowed a, uh, a cherry pit. Oh, that thing's gonna grow, it's gonna grow in your stomach, and you're gonna, you're gonna have leaves coming out your ears now. Fucking great. And, but you know what? I guarantee when he goes, if, if, if it doesn't happen, when he goes to take a dump, one good fart and, it's go- and he's going to have a hole in his in his bowl. That's it. So it's just like a fucking rock, man. Well, if it if it does start growing, I mean, it'll make it easier for you to get snacks while you're watching TV. Just reach up by your ear and just pick off a cherry or two. And- yeah, it's, it's funny you say that because my aunt um, <laughs> messed with me when I was a little kid and told me. It- don't swallow any watermelon seeds or you have watermelon growing in your stomach. Oh, shit. <laughs> of course, of course we know that that was just, you know, grandparents' way of telling you to be careful. You know, and yeah, it actually doesn't, it actually can't happen. So, unfortunately, right, you know, when, when we're little kids, what do you expect, you know? This she was trying to scare me on purpose. Mm-hmm. My grandmother did the same <laughs> thing, Billy. She I, was my aunt, not <laughs> my aunt. Well, my grandmother did the same thing, so. My Aunt Anime, not so much. Aunt Anime was like, just be careful eating melon, okay? That's all she said to me. Just be careful eating watermelon. My grandmother was like, don't swallow the seeds or you'll have watermelons growing in your gut. What? I'm a little kid that she's telling this to, and I'm like, really? <laughs> However, we all lived on the same the same cul-de-sac. <clears throat> and I was over the house. I was up, went up to the bathroom. <clears throat> I'm a little kid now. You're talking like you know, six years old, five years old. Walking down the step, walking down from upstairs. She's standing at the bottom. She flashes me her boobs, and then just start. I don't know what kind of face I made, but it made her laugh her fucking ass off. No, she sure. thought that was some funny ass shit. Yeah, but the thing about growing, growing stuff in you, did you ever see there was a, I always think about this, like the weird things in the world. There was a National Geographic thing about somewhere down in the Amazon where a fungus or a mold that grows on the, the ground 
and that the ants, when they breathe it or whatever, ingest it somehow, this thing goes directly to their brain and it starts growing and it forces them somehow to, it takes over and it forces them to climb up whatever's close to them to the highest point that they can on a branch or something and climb up and cling on for dear life and this thing sprouts out of their head and starts growing and then it ejects more of the mold below it feeds off the ant and then just that's how the cycle it keeps working and it does it to ants what a way and to I'll, go man what well, a way to go yeah that sounds like, but a, I, that sounds like ant aliens no, it's this is it really happens. It was a thing, but I thought about that. I, I said, you know, who knows? There's some stuff out there in the jungles and everything that we don't even know about. Oh, yeah, that yeah. You, you could end up with some weird ass shit. That yeah. you know, talking about cherry pits growing in you and stuff, and you get something like that. I wonder what that mold would do to a human being if it got into it. If it does that to an ant, fuck. Um, it reminds me of that movie. Aliens. Yeah, like yeah, aliens. aliens. Yeah. yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Well, it's yeah, about two thirty. I'm gonna fix to go to bed. So. <laughs> hey, before before you do gunslinger. Yeah, it's three thirty. I just, here. I just posted in a uh, 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 Facebook chat. Right. Uh, something a little that'll make you sleep a little better with a smile on your face. <laughs> Okay, well, look. before everybody goes blazing the trail, um, there's a uh, the latest uh, Judge Jeanine Pirro uh, opinion that, that was posted uh, by Oath Keepers. <clears throat> so I've got it ready to queue up. Don't you might oh, like to hear her thoughts on? Uh, on the Democrats and, and stuff, her latest uh, stuff here. So, yeah, take a listen to this before everybody blazes a trail. Now, the Democrats in this country are so freaked out, we elected a president who calls it the way he sees it and not the way the so-called mainstream media and political establishment on both sides of the aisle do, that they wake up hysterical every day, yelling, the Russians are coming, the Russians are coming, there's collusion everywhere, America is under attack, our way of life is coming to an end, and Chicken Little in the sky are falling. I'm even convinced they see dead people, too. You see, that is how we got to America. The Russians have landed. This whole dang island's under attack by Russia. The Russians have captured the airport. It's all over. It's, it's all over. We haven't got a chance. Not a chance. Fire until you see the light. Get out of the way. It's Agnes Grill. Those crazy Americans. All we wanted was both to pull our submarine off the reef and go home. <laughs> Syria has nothing to do with Russia and everything to do with Donald Trump. Their hatred, their intolerance, their venom for him. And if it doesn't stop, the Democrats and the Democrats alone will be responsible for the demise of a workable and effective government of the people. We simply cannot go four more years with Russia, Russia, Russia. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. And good old Nancy Pelosi right there in the Nancy Pelosi right there in the thick of it. After these latest revelations, it's becoming clear we have suffered a desecration of our democracy not seen since Watergate. A desecration of our democracy. Say what? So Donald Trump Jr., a political neophyte, gets an email from a friend saying he has information that would incriminate Hillary and her dealings with Russia that would be useful to his then candidate father running for president. He has the meeting less than 20 minutes and the discussion ends up on rescinding the ban on Russian adoptions. Nothing beneficial to the campaign comes out. But now, the hue and cry indict him for treason, for collusion, for campaign finance violations. Now, I got news for you. 
There is no law that says a campaign cannot accept information from a foreign government. If that were the case, everyone on a campaign who talks to a foreign national is committing a crime. And for you geniuses out there, there can be no treason since we're not at war with Russia. And by the way, the DNC and Hillary colluded with the Ukrainians to get information on Trump at the same time. And real covert operatives who understand meddling in other countries' elections say this is not how Russia would meddle in the election. That's not how it's done. Let's be clear. The Russians are masters at this kind of thing. They know exactly what they're doing. And no, it would be done in the dead of night. and You wouldn't see any evidence of it. It would not happen in the middle of a Senate office building in broad daylight. So now Donald Jr. is at fault for agreeing to meet someone to get opposition research. Now, as someone who's run for office five times, if the devil called me and said he wanted to set up a meeting to give me opposition research on my opponent, I'd be on the first trolley to hell to get it. And any politician who tells you otherwise is a bald-faced liar. So why the frenzy? Right after Hillary lost the election, Barack Obama imposes sanctions on Russia for hacking the DNC. Now, we all knew that Obama knew all along what Russia was up to, but he did nothing because he and the idiot pollsters predicted Hillary would win. So he felt no need to jeopardize his great relationship with Russia. That's what I said. Obama's great relationship with Russia. It was Obama in 2009 who gave the reset button to make nice with Russia. And when it came out, he knew about the hacking and the possible impact on the election. He says he told Putin to cut it out. Now, I personally don't even think he said that. So the Russians hacked the DNC emails exposing Two-Face Hillary and her lies, Donna Brazile giving Hillary questions for the debate, Debbie Wasserman Schultz knocking out Sanders to clear the playing field for her girlfriend Hillary, and Barack does nothing. Why? For your information, meddling in another country's election is not new to the United States. Barack Obama's State Department gave $300,000 to a not-for-profit in Israel to defeat Netanyahu. And for all you snowflakes out there, the U.S. has been meddling in other elections in other countries for decades. We staged a coup in Guatemala. Uh, a number of decades ago where we overthrew the government of Guatemala. We replaced the elected government of Iran with the Shah in 1953. Uh, we have done this and literally deposed leaders and replaced them with people who would do what we wanted them to. And it was Barack Obama who ended the missile defense shield plan for Poland and the Czech Republic. When he reneged, the Russians cheered, calling him brave, thanking him for the gift he gave Russia. And let me ask the Democrats out there, what did Barack Obama mean when he said this? After my election, I have more flexibility. You remember that hot mic moment? What message was Obama sending to Vladimir that he didn't want us, the American people, to know about? What was he willing to do for Putin that was so dangerous that it could have risked his losing the election? You tell me. And consider this. After drawing a red line in the sand, should Assad use chemical weapons on his people in Syria, Obama wimps out like a wuss and he does nothing. Think that one through. Obama then puts Putin in charge of overseeing the elimination of chemical weapons just used against the people in Syria. It tells you Putin puts pressure on Obama to let him, Putin, handle the situation for his friend and ally, Assad. 
and we put the fox in charge of the hen house and clearly failed since chemical weapon elimination deadlines were missed repeatedly. So folks, it's Barack Obama who's pals with Putin. He watched like a wuss as Russia invaded and annexed Ukraine and the Crimean Peninsula in 2014. And just to bring you up to date, it was his Department of Justice that let in the Russian lawyer Veselnitskaya without a visa and let her in under extraordinary circumstances, allowing her to then sit in the front row of a congressional hearing. And it was under Barack Obama that 20 percent of our uranium was sold to Putin with a hundred and forty five million dollar kickback to the Clinton Foundation that organized criminal enterprise. It was a money laundering operation and a five hundred thousand dollar speech fee paid to Bill Clinton by a Kremlin connected company. So I, for one, am sick and tired of Russia, Russia, Russia. Put up or shut up. And a message to those Republicans in Congress. You did nothing when the Democrats assaulted our democracy with fast and furious, the sales of weapons to the Mexican cartels, the Clinton Foundation, the sale of our uranium to Russia, Susan Rice lying about Benghazi. I want Loretta Lynch, Susan Rice, Hillary Clinton, and the rest of that gang under oath. So why don't you Republicans start supporting President Trump, face down this Russian nonsense, and start working for us, the American people? That includes health care. Otherwise, you're no better to us than the Democrats. Hmm. Oof. Damn. Do not piss off the judge. Nope. That woman... Ow! She spelled it right out. Plain as the nose on our faces. What do you think, guys? They need to play that in the uh, congressional meetings and the Senate meetings on a big screen TV up there. You go sit here and you go and listen. I'd, if I was Trump, I'd make them sit there and listen to her. Damn it. <laughs> Anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna drop. I'm going to bed. All right, there, gun. All right. What about the yeah. what about you other guys? Any thoughts? Yeah. No, I'm I'm starting to drift, man. I'm falling. You know what I did? I didn't cut that pill in half. I took the whole thing, and it's it's working. It's making me sleepy. <laughs> Fuck. Damn, Mike. Yeah. And I got Max next to me stretching. All right. Well, fellas, catch you next time. All right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Tomorrow night. We'll see you guys tomorrow night. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna try and get a hold of Ron Reck and find out if he's gonna do his mega church thing tomorrow night. Yeah. If he does, then cool. If not, then I'll think of something. I always think yeah. of something. All right. Guys, I'll see you tomorrow night. All right, Mike. Have a good one, buddy. All right. Have a good night. And I guess that'll do it for this impromptu Firefox News Online. For the comments I've made, that's the way it is from my perspective. Y'all be cool. Y'all be good, and if you can't be good, be careful. If you can't be careful, please, like I always say, don't name it after me. And we are out of here. Night, guys. Night. And as always, we close with this. Thank you for tuning in to Firefox News Online here on Mixler.com. Be sure to join us on our regular broadcast on blogtalkradio.com slash firefoxnews-online every Monday through Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. Firefox News Online is a production of Firefox News Online Productions. Any rebroadcast, transcript, either in whole or in part, without the express written permission of Firefox News Online Productions and its owner, is expressly forbidden. Copyright 2017. All rights reserved. Firefox News Online. Fair, balanced, and 
always responsible.